What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back in here with another YouTube live stream. Shout out to the Coach Gang. And that's you. For being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. And welcome to Wednesday evenings. Facts over feelings live stream where we kick the Mickey Ficky facts and we don't give a fox about your feelings. You in here with the Bruce Wayne of this new, ish. New, new, new the King order. of Kings, the King of Content, and... The speaker of truth, yours truly, the notorious one, new, new, aka new, new, new world order. Mr. Coach Alini, better known by the as the prognosticator, Coach Adamus. And you're in the Desert Storm bunker with none other than EWF. That is every woman's fantasy in the whole effing show, also known as the CEO. Nigaro of Fixes Binds LLC, the unbinder, the undebatable, the undisputed. Best entertainment here on YouTube. You're looking at the man that they call the Black Professor X and also the Morpheus of the Mating Matrix, the Chocolatey Confucius, the Dean of the Junior College, also the man that walks in the spirit of Elijah. Also, you can also know me as a whole bunch of nicknames, the man with more nicknames than anyone in the game, and we won't belabor the point. You can call me CGA, see God Allah, and I'll be the 10 time the highest champion of YouTube. I got distracted. I got distracted. Anyway, we got a great show for you lined up today. We got three women or more asking, why are they single? They said basically this. They been said, well, we got one crying on the internet, looking like she's crying grease on that fat, chunky face. She says, why am I still single? And I'm looking at her at the same time, and I'm thinking, oh, the humanity. that's what I'm thinking right there. But of course, you know, women have an interesting uh, situation here. Uh, for, for some reason, they've been so, you know, the, the fairy tale. I, I don't want to keep repeating myself. But for the most part, they think because they're a woman, they're supposed to have a mate. Oh, I'm a woman. Where's, the, where's my Prince Charming? Oh, I'm a woman. Uh, something's wrong with me if I don't have a mate. I'm a woman. I'm entitled to a man. Uh, I have a Punani right here. You see, I have a peace leave. Where's my guy? They're like, curses, you Lord. Curses to the Lord. You gave me a punani with no man. <laughs> they be out here bucking. And I'm looking at her like, your body is all shaped like body by hostess. <laughs> Curses the Lord, I have punani with no man. Uh, ma'am, just because you have a punani doesn't mean you get a mate. Women literally walk up. Yeah, they wake up like, hey, uh, where's my boyfriend? Silence, you fool. They wake up like, where's my boyfriend? Yeah, Crisco tears. Jesus. You should see her, man. She's a disgrace. I'll give you a preview of her. I just don't even want to belabor. Listen, I could tease. It could be a teaser here. But this woman's <laughs> this woman's crying Crisco grease. Take a look at this right here. Oh, man, this is terrible. I look like, take a look. Hold on for a second. Oh, the humanity. She's like, where's my boyfriend? Look at that. That's a disgrace. And she was really getting them Crisco grease tears out, bro. <laughs> Where is my mate? <laughs> she, ladies, Silence, you fool. just because you got a punani doesn't mean you got a punani. You got a punani doesn't mean you get a mate. You can't tell them that, though. Oh, man, this is crazy. Anyway, we got that coming up. We got Straggle and Sniggle Theater. We have, what else do we have today? We have, uh, do, should you trust the, trust the logic of women? Interesting thing here. A woman's going to reveal secret of middle-aged women. And it sounds like she's been watching the notorious one, CGA. But no, she's actually going to reveal a truth that I tried to tell y'all ninjas long time ago. <laughs> right. I tried to tell you a long time ago, and this woman's going to actually admit something that's not a secret to me. I'm like, I knew that already. But a lot of men heard me say it, and they're like, CGA, this is not so. All right, they got their blue pill panties in a bunch, looking like Ben Shapiro, looking like Matt Walsh. CGA, that's not true. We're red pill. We're red wing conservative. <laughs> ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh. These people are bought lock, stock, and barrel. You cannot believe these goofies. Where are you at, Matt Walsh? I challenge you, brother. All right, I set my aims up high. This ninja can do one stand. Matt Walsh got one trick. Matt Walsh is a one trick pony. All right, what's a woman? This ninja, he made his whole career on what is a woman. After that, this ninja whole career is like Matt Walsh got nothing. 
All right, you, Ninja, and your whole what is a woman is questionable, Ninja. I, like, I could have came up with that. All right, anyway, I will appreciate your work. Other than that, Ninja, you got, you a one-trick pony. All right, anyway, and Candace Owens, why don't you come through real quick? You can come to the studio. You are a married woman? Okay, I don't mess with married women, but you can still come through. I like to see, I like to see with that sister, but anyway. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, man, we already in here. We're ripping off a strip. What are we talking about here? Secret of middle-aged women coming up, and then we have women want to be traditional. Women want to be traditional. We got that coming up. And a much, much more. So do me a favor, hit the like button, and buckle your seatbelt for the evening show. It's a lot loosey-goosey over here. I might just be riffing and chilling. And I got time today, Ninja. Oh, I got time today. Yeah, I got time, cuz. I got time, cuz. Tomorrow I got time too. Yeah, I got time, cuz. I'll have time tomorrow. All right, but not for the weekend, cause the weekend finna be Liddy out here. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? All right, anyway. Candace seems like a nice lady. I like to bring her over with her flowery dress. You can bring one of the flowery dresses and like the, the shoes, what are they called? Tom's? Like the shoes with no the shoes with no sole on it. Let me see if I can pull it up. She seemed like she wears shoes like this. Hold on for a second. See where she at. Candace. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there, there you go right here. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. Yeah, she she seemed like she wears shoes like this. Oh, shout out to Candace Owens. Yeah. She coming over with, hey, get this damn thing off my screen. I don't want this on here. Like your flowery dress, Candace, and then come over and then, you know, with your shoes like this, the flats. Come over with the shoes like that. Don't, don't you think she wears shoes like that? Yeah, flats. Shout out to her. This is no diss, man. I'm not trying to diss her, man. I'm not trying to diss. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, let's get to the earlier contributors to the day show. And Dollar Sign, the notorious, uh, to contribute to the day show, Dollar Sign, the notorious CGA on the cash app, Benmo, Coach Greg Adams TV, and PayPal is PayPal. Dot me backslash Coach Greg Adams, and that be pent to the top of the live chat on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. And you can super chat on the Notorious CGA channel, new, indeed. Because we demonetized over here, and the ladies love to call me. Your third leg was just phenomenal. Yes, because I'm single. Because I'm single. All right, what are we doing here? Shout out to Nathaniel. Nathaniel. He says, showing love to you, CGA, and the coach, Gang Yang, in the building. Trang. Thank you for the show. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, guys. Shout out to Walk the Plank says, if God and Lucifer didn't have a main beach, what makes y'all think y'all can have one? For real. God lived the entire world without a mate. So did Lucifer, yes. Now, he might have got some, some women down there. He might have put hands on hips when they got down there. I heard Lucifer was the beautiful angel. All right, so he put hands on hips, I'm pretty sure, down in hell. But yeah, man, they women be like, I don't have a mate. Why am I single? What's wrong with me? Anyway, shout out to Walt Mosher says, Coach, YouTube says China and Japan have rent a girlfriend services. Why not in the United States? You're absolutely right. Actually, I've been showing very various clips of Asian women over there. It's not Thursday, so I won't play the music. But, you know, um, we live in a culture like the, the cultures around the world pretty much have dealt with prostitution in a way that it should be dealt with. It is the oldest profession. It is what it is. Uh, men have used it in America. It was it was legal up until the 1920s. Obviously, if you do some math, that was when women got the right to vote. Right around 1919, um, you know, prostitutes had a area um, where they allowed it to be out of sight and out of mind. The sheriff and the mayor and the uh, everybody else and everybody else, the bad guy, Big Bart, came in. They was playing at the whole house. You know what I mean? You could play a good old hand of uh, of Texas Hold'em, all right, and go up there and get a couple of uh, some syphilis, all right, from a hooker. That's You could do that back in the day. <laughs> but, you know, the church got a hold of, of the feminists, and the feminists said, this isn't fair. And as you can see, uh, most things feminine touch, they ruin. Feminists. Most things feminists touch, they ruin. This isn't fair, all right? We should have it out of sight. Nobody should see it. It shouldn't exist. It should be illegal. They think making things illegal is going to, like, stop it. <laughs> they think making 
They think making things illegal will stop things. Just like even early termination of pregnancy. We should make it illegal. All right. Is it going to stop it? It's actually going to make it worse. You're going to have you're going to have people doing it and doing it maybe particularly in another country. People driving to Mexico, getting through the cartello, maybe getting their cheeks clapped on the way to the Planned Parenthood in, in the Mexico cartello. All right, people are going to do it. We should get rid of firearms and make them illegal. It's just going to make the criminals have them. Guys, when you make stuff illegal, you virtually create a black market. You create pimps. You create street pimps. And that's what basically has uh, thrived because feminists and some of the clergy people try to eradicate things by making it illegal. All you do is make the black market hot. You make the block hot. <laughs> right and so in america we think that it's just because if it's illegal people will figure it out oh we shouldn't do it mm. no that's not how it works <laughs> right all you gonna make it is that the street pimps are gonna thrive and if and in fact those cultures have lived with it for thousands and thousands of years they just like all right my husband might want to touch on some long legs today i guess i can't do nothing about it all right amsterdam has figured it out uh County in uh, Las Vegas has figured it out. People, it's it's figure outable. But uh, here's what they'll do: they'll say, "Well, you you your your morals are bad if you do it." Ninja going to go clap some cheeks, and I'm just like, mm. <laughs> Ninja going. And by the way, we have dating, which is prostitution, on steroids, and they make it so that if you take a date, even a woman that you would a woman of the night, if you walked up to her, you'd be like, "Hey," she'd be like, "You have a date tonight." Dating is prostitution. If you miss my stream. Yesterday, dating stems from prostitution. That's number one. And I did see somebody comment on another thread on Instagram just randomly about that. That's interesting. But dating does stem from prostitution. It basically legalizes the Prostitution Act by taking the woman out for gifts and drinks. And now we think that's traditional dating. It is not. It is not. The dude, dating, I want men to understand and take the pressure off yourself. The reason why I tell you this is to take the pressure off yourself. Dating is just modified pro prostitution. That's all it is. And most of the time, you don't even get no sex from it. There ain't no charity girls. It's basically a scam. Dating is a straight up scam. So it's a ridiculous notion. But anyway, these other cultures, you can go rent you a girlfriend. You can go on over there. You my girlfriend for the day. And it is what it is. Same thing in Thailand. And of course, game ninjas want to take their bullshit over there. And then they want to get those girls who are rental rental girls. They want to get them for free. I got player game. I got mouthpiece. I'm gonna go and run game on Soy Six in Thailand. I'm gonna go to Japan and run game on rental girlfriends. People are morons. <laughs> All right, them game ninjas are literally the parasites of the dating marketplace. They're worse. I, I'm, I'm telling you, game ninjas are worse than the women that we obsess about in the red pill space. Like delusional women, game women, game ninjas are worse than delusional women in the dating marketplace. And it ain't even a contest. It's not even close. It's not even close. Game ninjas are the worst. <laughs> they, they muck up everything with their bullshit. And it's no, it's no point in even doing what they're doing. They should just step to the side. Oh, here come the game ninjas. Here come the ninjas. I'm going to get them to do it. I'm going to get them to do it for free. I'm going to get them to get it. Them ninjas jump on a sugar daddy app and then try to coax the hoes to do something that they're there not to do. I mean, I despise these game ninjas. By the way, there were some guys that sent in super chats while the show closed up. All right, right at the end. But game ninjas, anybody that tells you to run, get them. these guys are the parasites of the dating marketplace. They're the cockroaches of the dating marketplace. They're disgraceful. They mess up anything, anything, and everything you, for no reason. And you know why? Because they have nothing else left but manipulation. They got a lot of broads. They got a lot of broads, and it's just disgraceful. I, I'm hoping guys really get the message. And you don't have to convince me of nothing, Ninja. We ran enough game 20-something years ago. We did enough mouthpiece a long time ago. But it's a disgrace. They're disgraceful. Anybody in I, the, some of the nerds I see talking about game, it makes me want to throw up. <laughs> it makes me want to absolutely barf. The ninjas talking about game. It is a disgrace. I see ninjas, goofy ass ninjas somewhere in Edmonton talking about it. I see skeleton ninjas talking about it. 58 year old married ninjas talking about it. Old 1990s ninjas 
sitting in a dungeon talking about game. This shit is a disgrace. I'm tired of it. I'm on a no game campaign. These ninjas are shitty individuals. Some of them I'm cool with off the screen, but this shit is getting out of hand. <laughs> These ninjas are the worst, and they're the worst salespeople of all time. <laughs> These ninjas need to be stopped. All right, anyway, what are we doing? Naja, how you running game in Edmonton? I, I've been always wanting this. I've been wanting to know how the fuck you running game in Edmonton. There ain't no way possible that I'm going to buy that. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you old ass ninjas sit down trying to trying to scoop up every dime from the incel community that you can. You are a disgrace. <laughs> All right, anyway. Ninja, please. All right. I hope they watching my show and I hope they get their recess chin up on the Internet trying to holler my name. Anytime they get their recess chin up here and they skinny ass body with your skin hanging off, balding like Hulk Hogan and these goofy ass nerd ninjas. I hope you get up on the Internet talking about me. It's so hard for me to sit back here in this studio looking at a guy out here hollering my name how the hell you in the snow running game on hoes like where in edmonton where are we talking about here calgary ninjas in calgary running game with on horse broads stop we not running game in calgary <laughs> all right is my heater on jesus i got some going i got stuff going on anyway we pimping in edmonton all right, okay. <laughs> I'm hoping they show up. They listen to because you know they watch me. You know they watch me. All right, I'm gonna give them a reason to get into their little group again and jump on the internet to jump down my throat. Shout out to Slick Vision says feels good to super chat over here again. Shout out to you and everybody here on the Notorious Channel. All right. Shout out to Lamont James says the alpha male persona claims that they are alpha based on certain traits and characteristics and they aren't beta, but it's contradictory because it's a persona to obtain and please females, which is simpery. I I've been saying that for a long time and shout out to my alpha male brothers out here. And no, this is not an alpha male podcast. Uh, this is a masculinity, true masculinity podcast over here. But yes. But dudes be out here, brothers. They be out here doing personas. And again, traits of alpha. I always say there's only one alpha. There's only going to be one alpha. Okay, but ninjas have this dream that they're going to be all in one room with alpha males. <laughs> right. We're going to be alpha males and we're going to have, uh, you know, scotch on the rocks and we're going to be smoking cigars and we're going to have white shirts that are, button down to the third button and we're going to have chains and shit and we're going to be sitting around smoking cigars and you know what I mean? And we're going to be growing beards by the moment and drinking protein shakes. <laughs> nah. Mm -mm. There's only one alpha at one particular point. And all anybody has to say <laughs> And all anybody has to say is, can't nobody get the baddest hoes like me? And then it'll be on. Or you can walk in and say, nobody in here, I bet you nobody in here can whoop my ass. And then it's on. Once again, it's on. And then you're going to see ninjas uh, scurry to the back with their liposuction bellies. All right, they're going to be in the back. <laughs> he said, yep, that's literally why they created the Royal Rubble. Ninja. That's why they got ninjas fighting in the cage. We want to know who the top alpha is. We don't want a room full of y'all. All right. We don't want a room for the alphas. Everybody get the bus and out here. Let's go. All right. You're, you're not. There's no room full of alphas. There's one. There's numero uno. And no, your persona. Well, alphas in the mind. Nope. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not in your mind. It is not in your mind. Alpha got to prove themselves. Lions go and smack other lions just for hobbies and say, what you going to do with bitch ass ninja? That's what lions do. What you going to do? Smack him. Take his broad. All right. Ninjas don't be sitting around. Lions all walking. We're all lion alphas. I bet you nobody in here can deal with these hands. Now you're going to see who the top alpha is. Anybody that don't step up and say, what? What? 
It's a wrap. There's no alpha. He's the top dog by just claiming it. Macaroni Tony, you're scary accurate. Had a JUCO drunkenly give me her phone unlocked and say, go ahead, read it. We can talk about it tomorrow. Because <laughs> I was telling men, I was telling men what women talk talk to you about. I talk to other people about you. All right. Women talk about you guys. All right. And so why did she do that? Macaroni Tony, why did she do that? That's weird. All right. Uh, anyway, that's why would she do that? She's <laughs> why did she hand it to you unlocked? Anyway, we're going to get into it. He says the lion is a loner for real, man. They don't walk in packs and grow up. They don't jump on live streams together. They don't. Alpha means one, the first. <laughs> That's who it is. It's, it's the one. All right, anyway, but uh, continue your pipe dreams. Uh, men are being completely ignored in our society, plus they're being completely misdirected. And I got to call a spade a spade. All right, anyway, what do we got going on here? We got um, Straggle and Snickle Theater. Okay, okay, we'll get to it. Hey. Right. With me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Drag once to go theater, man. We back. All right, hit the like button. Enough BS. We got over a thousand people watching us right here. What do we got here? 1250 11. Shout out to Brown 310. He back in here. Straggle once to go theater. We have a young woman that says being blonde is a cheat code of life. If you didn't know. Being blonde is a cheat code of life. This is a woman that I featured before on our channel. And she's looking a little tadpole or froggy in the face. But, yeah, you know, it is what it is. This is the all-American girl. I wish they all could be California girls. She got her flat backs out. Sloppy yogurts. Yep. All right, uh, this is what, never mind. Let me get in. Blonde is a cheat code. Um, so dyeing my hair blonde changed my entire life. This is what I used to look like. Like... <laughs> Everywhere I go, people just assume I don't know that much and they help me with everything, which is perfect because I don't know that much. So imagine being a brunette that doesn't know anything. Like, life was harder. So I dyed my hair halfway through college. I was graded so much harsher in the first half. The second half, it was like, aw, you came to class? Wait, you're, that's so studious of you. <laughs> like, that's cool. I hit this guy's car in a McDonald's drive through and I wasn't even on my phone. I was looking straight ahead. It's just that I forgot how to keep the car stopped for a second. Which all you have to do is keep your foot on the brake. I forgot. I thought the guy was going to get out of the car and yell at me, but he gets out and he looks at me and he was like, were you putting makeup on? You're silly. I just want to make sure that you're okay though. How are you? I was like, I just hit your car. I mean, I'm fine. If you want to hang out. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like if I were to walk out of a grocery store with a cart full of items, the employees would be like, sweetie, so you're usually supposed to pay when you go through self-checkout, but there's, okay, there's no way you would have known. It's so stupid, honestly. Like, who cares? Here's the thing. I don't think it has to specifically be blonde hair. I think it's more about finding the hair color that looks good for your skin tone, but your goal should always be people's expectations of you should be on the floor. The bar oh. should be on the floor. That way, anything you do, everyone's like, no way. Yes. And that Oh. That's the only thing I ever needed to learn in my entire life. Oh, man. That's the only thing, brother. Okay. Um, I, I, I can see her point there. She's not wrong. She got a wide-ass mouth, though. That must, That's a wide tadpole ass in the mouth there. All right. Uh, and she got the raspy voice. She seemed like a party girl. Uh, you know, the wall's going to be vicious on this woman. But, hey, listen, I will tell her to party it up. Ain't nothing like an old, straw-haired, long-haired old woman. Old white woman. It's going to be bad news for her, bro. She don't realize, man, the clock is ticking. All right. She living on borrowed time. All right. But I hope she has her fun as much as she can. And she's going to have fun thriving there. She said when she was a brunette, people thought she was smarter. Right. And she's like, I'm not very smart. And being a blonde has put life on easy, easy mode. Nobody expects anything of her. Um, yeah, man, this is going to be a fun ride. Uh, realize that this ride comes to a screeching halt. But. That's neither here nor there. She can come get folded up too, uh, but I won't expect much out of her, man. She seemed kind of ding batty. She seemed kind of ding batty, and that's what she said. And anybody that's offended by that, she's a ding bat. All right, but she'd be fun to have around. She'd be goofy. She she'd be goofy. Oh, and by the way, she definitely loves to get choked. Look at that neck. These white women be having a lot of neck. Look at that neck, brother. Hold on, let me zoom in. Look at that neck. They legs be like giraffes necks. Right, they booze be down in the middle of their stomach, in the middle of their torso, right? They back be long. I mean, it's definitely a thing. I mean, she definitely a little princess. That neck, I want to see what that neck do. Forget what that mouth do. 
I'm going to see what that neck does. All right, yeah, she definitely foldable. I ain't got nothing to say about that. All right, she's like, I get what I want. Look at me, I have blonde hair. All right, Disney, Rapunzel. <laughs> Rapunzel, here we go right there. Oh, we got a Ling Ling on a Wednesday, and she's targeting you ninjas here on Strat going Sniggle Theater. For you broke ninjas, man, this is going to be painful to listen to. We got a Ling Ling, and it says, what a man's credit card says about him, and I think this is part two. I think this is part two of a video I hadn't found part one. Uh, but here it is right here. What a man, what a man's credit cards says about him. Okay. His credit card says about him on the first date, part two. If a man pulls out this credit card, he is bougie travel daddy. He definitely makes good money in finance or tech, and he'll definitely be taking you out on nice dates. Overall green flag. If a man pulls out this credit card on the first date, he's not quite at bougie travel daddy level yet, but he's getting there. He knows the value of chase points, but maybe just doesn't make as much money as bougie travel daddy. Still, green flag. If this man pulls out this credit card, it means either one of two things. This is the first credit card he's probably ever had since he was a college student. Oh, that no. either means that he knows commitment really well and has built up his credit over the years, oh. or he's been racking up credit card debt ever since college and maybe is having trouble paying it down. One of man's credit cards says about him on the first date. Boy, she talks fast. That's not even in double speed right there. That's single speed. All right, what a man's credit card says about him. Did she say part two? All right, so she had a couple of credit cards there. Um, the Chase Fire, say, was it the Chase Sapphire? I think I saw a Discover card and another one I could not see. What was it, a silver card? I can't see it. All right, but uh, yeah, she, she's going crazy here. She didn't even mention Amex or Platinum or Black Card. I think maybe this is another video. But uh, as you can see, these women learn very fast, and that's the point that uh, there are some women that are apex predatory, especially women that look like her. This would be an Americanized Ling Ling. Uh, which are very, very deadly, deadly animal. For most people, you'll never even touch one. <laughs> All right, you'll never even touch one. So this woman is maybe second, third generation Ling Ling. Uh, you know, sounds like a valley girl, but looks like a Fabi. And they're very apex predatory. All right, their, their father's a whole engineer and a nerd with bifocals, yet she wants a high value man and she'll get one, especially if she uh, is around the right, uh, Ricky Tans and or the right white men. She's going to get her one and she out here looking at Rolex watches. What did I tell you? I always tell you, they be looking at Rolex watch. They be looking at your watch, your shoes. All right. They're very apex predatory. She definitely sounds like a Southern California Ling Ling or it may be a New York one. All right. But she own it. She own it. Gold Digger Supreme. She watching your credit card, what you whipping out, what type of wallet you got, shoes, what your Gu Gucci loafers. She looking at your, your wrists, your diamonds, your watches, and she don't want no gaudy shit. She don't want no uh she don't want no gaudy shit. She don't want no bust down stuff. She wants it right here. She got it. And this woman barely even graduated from University of California Berserkly. She definitely looked like she went to California Berserkly. All right, she watching you, Ninja. She watching you. Date part two. If a man pulls out this credit card, he is bougie travel daddy. He definitely makes good money in finance or tech, and he'll definitely be taking you out on nice dates. Wow. I mean, wow, take a look at that. <laughs> Just looking at it. I'm sitting there like, hey, look at this. That's basic, bro. That's basic. And she's watching you. Oh, you don't have the right credit card. Him, him, him. Yeah, Apex Predators for real, man. That's crazy. Overall green flag. If a man pulls out this credit card on the first date, he's not quite at bougie travel daddy level yet, but he's getting there. He knows the value of chase points, but maybe just doesn't make as much money as bougie travel daddy. Still, green flag. If this man pulls out this credit card, it means either one of two things. This you know is what? the first credit card he's probably ever had since he was a college student. That either means that he knows commitment really well and has built up his credit over the years, or he's been racking up credit card debt ever since college and maybe is having trouble paying it down. Okay. Um, I wonder if she has another video related to this. Is that the, I can't, I, I kept, I kept forgetting to watch the other, how many she said is number one, number two. Okay, she's talking about a lot of credit cards on her page there. Okay, here's another one. I think he all right, try things to notice on the first date, a man's credit card. All right, there you go right there. Boy, she a whole apex predator. All right, let's give it to her. Let's see what she's got here. This hinge profile during your first date, the credit card he pulls out will tell you everything you need to know about him. If he pulls out an Amex. Damn, she needs some chapstick. Oh, we, if, she, if he pulls out an Amex. All right, let's see what this is. Platinum, just know that he makes money and probably works in like finance or tech because otherwise, how would he afford that annual fee? All right, the annual fee. All right, what, 250 bucks? All right, let's continue. All right, I think this, yeah. All right, let's continue. And then while he's pulling this out, he's probably telling you all about the benefits he gets with that annual fee with this credit card. Okay. That being said, if you guys do start traveling internationally and he hasn't hit the min spend of $75,000 on this credit card, he will be leaving you to go to the Centurion Lounge. Oh, well, yeah. While you go to the gate alone. That's true. That's true. Uh, don't ask me how I know. So red flag. If he pulls out a Capital One Venture There's X, a, yeah, okay. green flag. 
He may not be the most extravagant spender, but just know that he will do his research and take you both on trips that are well within y'all's budgets. All right, somebody said flat-chested demon. You ain't lying, boy. Them little prunes. All this for some prunes on the chest, brother. I'll tell you, man. These women out here. <laughs> here we go right here. 700. Okay, whatever. I know it's relatively not that high. Say 700. Okay, yes. I'm not, I, Listen. I haven't even noticed what the annual fee is, but that's neither here nor there. Let's continue. Plus, when you guys travel internationally, he won't be leaving you alone at the gate. Instead, he'll be making sure that you get all the food that you want at the Capital One Lounge. If he pulls out an Amazon credit card, this man is not financially responsible and just know that he shops probably more than you do. Not to mention, we all know that Amazon's return policy is uh, pretty loose. So while he may be paying for this first date now, after a few months and a roller coaster ride of emotions, he will probably come back to you and say that he just wants to be friends and no harm, no foul, right? Mm. So red flags, proceed with caution. If this man pulls out a Wells Fargo credit card, just know that he has been cheated on. Despite all the scandals oh, over the years, geez. he still trusts Wells Fargo enough to get a credit card from them. So that means he still just wants to see the best in people despite being lied to multiple times, which is why he'll tell you about all the great perks that this credit card has when he pulls it out. Overall, I would call this a yellow flag because he is trusting, but maybe he's too trusting, you know? But thinking looks at his- Man, these- Wow. <laughs> these women are watching y'all more than you know, brother. All for some- Them raisin titties, man. All right, babe, you see my credit card, baby? Hold up. Let me get some now. Let me get some. She like, okay, daddy, where she at with it? Okay, daddy. Yeah. You see my credit card, huh? Come here. Anyway, who she thinks she is out here? Who do you think you are? Let's go to the next one because this is getting out of control. Uh, remember this woman right here says, uh, it says right here, you shouldn't, you should make, again, women with money, man. <laughs> women with money. Where are we at right here? This woman says right here, uh, remember her, she says you need to make $50,000 a year, but don't date, which I agree with, but you know, the messenger and all. Here we go. So if you're making $50,000, don't date. I'm I'm just being for real. You're not ready to date again. I'm you're not right. ready to you're not ready to date because courtship costs. Okay, everything costs. Okay. You can go for 22 walks in the park. Eventually, Shorty is gonna need a sip of something. She's gonna she be does. thirsty. She this does. bottle of water is three dollars in Atlanta. Let's oh, not play. Please. So if you don't have any expendable cash, mm. don't date. And what don't date? All right. And so this is you know she went viral with this, and you know a lot of people say so. Glocktavius carries cash. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but um, in the upper echelon communities, cash is not a good look. It's not a good look. You should have a little bit of cash in your wallet. And I like that the the uh, Fanny the Fanny woman, what's her name? The Fanny May. And they were talking about cash, but I don't know if you know in the upper skills communities, if you whip out a a, a if you whip out a wad of cash, they're gonna look at you like, <laughs> who know who knew that. Who knew that? Did you guys know that with dating? When you're dating upper, and I always tell y'all, y'all not ready to date upper class women. They they predatory as hell. All right, she reminded me to put some lip balm on. But if you're in a upper scale community and you whip out a wad of cash, you're gonna look like a a freaking old school pimp. <laughs> you're gonna look crazy. They're gonna be like, because a lot of people do it. They'll like they'll go up to women in the upscale club and they'll pull out their cash and be like. Yeah, yeah, huh? Look, look at me. I got cash. It's actually low grade. It's actually low grade. It's crazy, <laughs> but people don't know that. And they will look at you like you're ghetto. They'll be like, "Damn, why are you carrying cash like that?" They'll they'll be suspicious of you. Why you got a wad of cash? Why you got two thousand dollars in cash? Now you know what I mean. Like you could have it, but I wouldn't whip it out at Mastros and be like, "Look at me here, here." But it's true. It's true. They will they will look at you as your suspect. They won't give you no big ups. Now, if you do it in front of uh, Strags, Strags might notice it. Strags will notice it. But anyway, <laughs> he says the roll thumb for real. Don't don't do that if you're in the upper scale. Don't whip out cash. That's low grade. Uh, but uh, anyway, I I use I like cash. I like cash. But that's neither here nor there. Back to this. Back to these straggles. Back to these straggles right here. Take a look at this one. Who beat her face up? And anyway, I'm a little bit honorary today. Why am I talking shit? Well, apparently, the woman says you're bottom of the barrel right here. Listen. Whatever that looks like for you. You might only make 50000 but you live in a shoe. And now you got expendable cash. Or get you a bottom of the barrel bitch that's going to date you when you have no money. There you go. A bottom of the barrel beach. Well, apparently, the internet is not very forgiving. And they did their research. Apparently, this woman sells... Punani. 
when I start selling pussy, I don't want to hear it. And they found it. According to her, my testimony, same woman that called y'all bottom of the barrel ninjas, it said sugaring made me feel so empty. I didn't want to be with these men just to get the bag, but I felt like I was already working my ass off and I couldn't get another job because she was broke. Let you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke. Indeed. Dead, flat, stony, broke. I got $3.85. And it says right here, I couldn't get another job, so I would go out on paid dates just to get an extra $400 in my pocket. Remember, this woman called y'all ninjas bottle bottom of the barrel this one says this was a date at this five-star bed and breakfast it was always nice while i was there but i was still coming home to this which was this i don't know what she was coming home to but this is her with that fat monster rump right there look at that fat ass who paying that for that fat stinky booty and it says then i got into sugaring started selling pictures and doing crazy stuff just to make a damn dollar. Not my proudest point, but a something I don't hide because I want you to know a journey isn't always pretty and the business you start is never the business you scale. You just got to start somewhere, cease. All right, so remember, this is where we are. Also, you can't see it. All right, my bad. Y'all like, let me see that big fat fanny. All right, there it is. Ninjas is like, I can't see, coach. Take a look at that. That is one big pooter right there. Take a look at that pooter. All right, you can see it now, Ninja. Calm down. All right, I know. I was looking at it for my own pleasures. I was watching it. Look how fast y'all wanted to see the fanny. Look how fast y'all wanted to see that big fanny. Look at that rump. I bet you that whole, never mind. Look at that thing. It's got his own zip code. But uh, it, there you go. This is the woman that called y'all ninjas. Bottom or said bottom of the barrel. Out here slanging, slanging. I looked at it as I have an ATM between my legs and I just, I'm just using it. All I got to <laughs> do is put my card in and that's it. And put the pin number yeah. and boom, money just comes Same right woman right there. Call y'all get a bottom of the barrel beach. I don't date ninjas that make 50K. So now you know the secret's out, which is not a secret anymore. I've been telling you, these women are out here slanging it. This is why they're coming back and they can't date guys that make 50K. All right. So they, they're really at a point where it's kind of like what Chris Rock said. Chris Rock said a woman cannot go backwards in lifestyle. Chris Rock said this back in the day. Woman cannot go backwards in lifestyle. Once she, you know, in high school, you have a car. She dates a man with a car. It's going to be tough for her to ever date a man without a car. Okay. Um, in college, they get a guy that has his own apartment. You live in the dorm. She has access to go scream her head off while she, she's getting throttled in an apartment. She will probably never want to get beat the brakes beat off of her in a dorm room. She gets out of college. You have a house. You have your own house upstairs, downstairs, three-car garage, swimming pool in the back. It's going to be hard for her to, her to date a ninja in an apartment. It's going to be hard for her. Not saying she won't do it. It's going to be hard for her to come back in lifestyle. You got a ninja that can get in first class. It's going to be hard to get her back in coach. It's going to be hard in her mind, even if she doesn't deserve it. You might say she doesn't deserve it. But once she's been experiencing this, it's going to be hard. A woman becomes an OnlyFans girl, a stripper, a sugar baby, a street walker. It's going to be hard to pull her back. It's going to be hard as hell to pull her back into a traditional marriage and relationship. It's going to be hard. So as a result, a lot of women are venturing into this. They're playing. They're dipping their toe in it, and it's gonna. It's hard for him, them to come back. So they look at 50K and just ask, what? Even the Ling Ling with the credit card, okay? Even the Ling with the credit card. She's probably sugar babying or dating, you know, dating up or doing some things that we talk about on Locals. And again, I don't mind it because you're very useful women. However, that's what she's doing. It's going to be hard for them to come back and want to build for a man. That's what she's doing right now. And even that woman, the big woman, with that big fat fanny, that talked about get a bottom of the barrel beach. And <laughs> there's her rump right there, all in the camera. Mm. It's crazy, but I think 
you know, that's going to be, that's one of the major problems of the dating marketplace. All right. And that's where the game then just try to overcome that. They don't want you to get your passport and go over to Soy 6. They don't want you to go to Vietnam. They don't want you to go to Cambodia. They're like, nah, don't go over there. Because when you go over there, you're going to be like $60. That's it. <laughs> you're going to say, oh, hold up, hold up for a second. Did you say, did you say, did you say 100, 1,000 baht? Yeah, 1,000. You're going to be like, <laughs> hold up for a second. They don't want you to do that. They're like, no, I need you to stay over here. I got a course for you, seven ninety nine, and you can learn all the game you want. And if it don't work, it's because you don't know how to do it. All right, they want you to put that money in their pocket. And so that's what you're having here. But you're putting it into the pocket of women that have been monetized. All right, now I'm talking about regular girls. And so they want you to overcome a woman that is used to getting 400, 500, 800, looking at ninjas with credit cards, going on fine dates. All right, I'm going to teach you how to overcome these women and get it for free. That's what they're doing. Somebody said 100 baht, 1,000 baht. Yeah, 1,000 baht is 30 bucks or so. And you're like, what? Did you say 1,000? Okay, I'm in. Mm. <laughs> and they're just coming back on the plane like I ran game on them women down there. All right, uh, what do we got here? Broken homes? Yeah, broken homes in America. What do I tell you? Single motherhood is a choice. Single motherhood is a choice, and we're going to hear young women talking about it in the modern times. Broken homes are not created by men only. They're really only created by women. All right, uh, but uh, here we go right here. This man's going to ask these drags, what would they like more, a traditional man who uh, doesn't have money but is home with the kids or a man that has money but is not home with the kids? Here we go. I'd rather have a child with a man who's financially stable but won't be in the child's life or with a broke man who will be present in the child's life. Am I getting child support? I take the financially stable. <laughs> They're financially. Nice. Child support! Financially stable! <laughs> Give me the one that's not in the child's life. We good. We got the money. We good. We can pay the bills and help take care of them. Okay. They don't gotta be there. I'd rather have a child with a man who's financially stable but won't be in the child's life or with a broke man who will be present in the child's life. Yeah, and there you go, guys. I mean, I think in a lot of places and a lot of these situations, unless you know, you, most men don't know. You can't win. Uh, you, you can't win in this situation. So, you know, especially with women like this that are, have a tendency to be bald like me and, uh, you know, get pregnant and let pookies run in them and skeet in them and scammers and dope. It. And then they later on, once they mature and they realize the errors of their ways and they pick the wrong guy, then they'll come across and say, he ain't doing what he's wanted. He ain't responsible. He does not lie in the kid's life. And these kids need a daddy. All right. But then they were like, as long as you was out here scamming with your pocket full of cash. All right. Your pocket roll, your money roll and your money clip. They didn't mind it. As long as they were kept collecting the child support, they didn't mind it. But it's so hard out here being a single mother. And uh, that is the Strag's society. That, that's what it is. That's what it is. And let me just tell you, if you are the dad that's in the kid's life, but you're struggling, she going to have your ass. She going she gonna to give you hell. She's going to give you hell more likely than not. Give you absolute hell. <laughs> right? So it's one of these things that men, men don't see coming. Um, and this is most women, not all, but the ones that are not like this are few and far between. There are married women that are like this, married women that are like this. So women do depend on some sort of, um, stability, but then at the same time, you're getting a, a catch 22 where if you are stable, you're actually worth more divorce than you are married. They'll figure it out. It's, t it's kind of tough, but there it is. Single, um, women. What did I say? Single mothers are created by single mothers, not men. They chose this life, and that's what they chose. And I do have an update on the story here, and I thought this was the case because I saw it in the comment section, but I didn't present it. Remember this drag uh, judge here? This straggle judge right here. Yeah, this straggle judge who shot her boyfriend as he slept. All right, his boyfriend, she, well, her boyfriend of one year as he slept, she shot him in the eyeball like Bushwick Bill as he slept. And it says right here, 67-year-old judge who shoots her boyfriend in the head for breaking up with her allegedly shot her estranged husband in his genitals years prior. And she's a judge. And she's a judge with more degrees than a thermometer. This is crazy. 
Let me read the story here. It says neighbors got uh, neighbors. Get into this crazy story. A Pennsylvania judge has landed herself behind bars because she could face the uh, face the fact that her relationship had ended. All right. Let me get this a little bit bigger there right there. All right. Judge Sonia M. McKnight, 67, was taken aback after being told by her boyfriend, Michael McCoy, that he was leaving her ass and she needed to move out of his house. He asked her multiple times to leave before taking the house key that he had given her. But like a roach infestation, she found her way back. She opened her legs more than likely. He didn't know Sonya made a copy of the key. Of course, they're very dastardly and sneaky. McCoy left for work thinking he had finally gotten rid of that broad, only to see her sitting on his couch eating cereal the next day. These people are creepers. She left McCoy no other choice but to say the scariest uh, thing you could possibly say to a black person is, I'ma tell your mom. That's when Sonia said, oh, you really serious, according to the affidavit. When McCoy went to sleep that night, he was awakened to a hole in his head and pain in his eye. Sonia had shot him, but was pretending as if McCoy did it himself, hoping his blames would be leaking. What have you done to yourself, she asked. When police arrived, they found the gun residue on her hands. This isn't Sonia's first time pulling out that fire, though. In 2019, she was cleared of charges after being accused of shooting her estranged husband in the penis. Mm. All right, wow. She is now uh, being charged with attempted deletion and aggravated assault. Wow, these people out here, out here, but these black men. McCoy, unfortunately, is blind in one eye. Sonia decided that if she had uh, has to live, with holes in her heart, she's going to leave these men with a hole in his head. Thank God they survived an update. After some fact checking, checking, she's actually 57, still old enough to know better. 57, not 67, as you can see there. 57 years old, and people will be like, Coach, date someone your age. Well, this woman's kind of older than me, almost by a decade. But old bras are the worst, man. You know, they're easy, and they're super soggy. You know, when I'm nasty, I like some soggy women every now and then, you know, because they be extra soggy and you like to see them and you be resting on them. You be laying on them, squeezing her lungs and her titty be tickling right here. You ever do that? No. OK, it's just me. Mm, oh, that's nasty. Yeah, it happens. It's kind of like a thing, you know, I don't mind soggy women. But, yeah, you be on her and you be having her folded up. You have one leg up before she catch a cramp in her in her calf or her hamstring. And you be smashing her, and then her titty, her nipple be poking you in the belly button. Like right here, it be leaking out the side. No, nah, that's just me, huh? Oh, that's nasty. Mm. Yeah, that's why I be at the junior college. That's why I be at the junior college. <laughs> anyway, you got to watch out. All right, you got to watch out right here, man. These soggy women out here, the sog bicester, then got them in the body and in the brain. All right, the body and the brain. Yes, indeed. Where we at, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's Drago and Sniggle Theater. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride. All right, all right, do me a favor, hit the like button, man. This is the best entertainment, man. This is the evening show. This, today's not a family show. Today's not a family show, anyway. He says, don't bring up my past. I like that every now and then. You be smashing and you look down and you be like, oh, that's her titty tickling me right there. That's cool. You know what I mean? And not not often. Not often do you have like a soggy boob right here on the side of your uh, stomach. Anyway, let's stop, man. This show is already off the road. Lord, have mercy. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused. <laughs> All right, anyway. Yeah, man, somebody said thank you, coach, man. I appreciate it, man. I, I'm trying to tell y'all, man, these people out here are bad and evil. They doing some evil things to you, brothers, man. And a lot of y'all don't know what you're walking into. Sleeping with the enemy. I was right. Double R. Mr. Raul Rodriguez says, was at the Daytona 500 this weekend watching Pog flatbacks trying to get some ping ping from drivers. They weigh more than the drivers and it doesn't stop them. Pogs from getting in there trying to get on them drivers. They was out there probably thirsty too. road tail. Roll tail. <laughs> oh man, y'all wild. Y'all not y'all haven't dealt with enough older women. I'll be dealing with the, you know what I mean. Mm. 
no government name says, what's up, coach? I know I'm late, but I wanted to add to your discussion of the spectrum from last night. I recently met a young woman, and during the conversation, we got on the topic of what she did for work, and she probably told me she did OnlyFans. I nearly busted out laughing in her face, thinking it was uh, it was just being, she was just being funny, but she was dead serious, completely inconspicuous, not very attractive at glance, maybe a six out of 10, in my opinion. I'm thinking she's some wannabe straggle. Come to find out, I looked her up, and she has over 1 million followers on Twitter and is in the top 1% of OnlyFans. My jaw dropped. It's crazy to see someone um, someone in one realm of life and have no idea who they really are. This chick does the unthinkable on camera for millions of people to watch, and she's sitting in front of me as someone completely independent of that. She looked like a completely different person. When her clothes started coming off, really changed the way I look at people in my day to day. Sorry for the long paragraph, but shout out to you. One of the things we awaken people to is the dark side and the dark side is Liddy, but the dark side is real. The spectrum is real out here. Um, I've dealt with this, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I've dealt with this, too, and it's a phenomenal thing. And uh, people think, well, if she's so successful on OnlyFans, why is she out here? Guys, they don't just sit in. They're not robots. <laughs> they're not robots. They don't just sit in the room making cam videos. In fact, it gets quite easy for them, especially if they have a manager. So they then want to reengage with the general population. They do want to come outside. They get tired of shopping. And they want men, other than the men that they're doing things with or with the toys they're doing, they want a date. They want relationships. It's bizarre, I know. They want relationships. But what they don't typically do is deal with guys that are in the regular population. So you'll see them at the JUCO. And I've dealt with women like that in in wide varieties of entertainment. It is what it is. So it's wild. Man, the, the spectrum is wild. And it's real. It's real. Shout out to our brother. Caitlin says when I've come, what I've come to realize even more now is that men don't need relationships per se to have sex. We're going to make that point later. He says we get into them to access or to get access because it's riskier for women to have sex outside of them. Women should ask themselves why men don't beg them for commitment after they bone them. Yeah. And uh, well, they already know that. A good, smart woman would know to be able to try to leverage as much as possible before they give up the sex. Leveraging afterwards is kind of hard because I tell them you don't have your super suit on. You don't have your super suit. You know, I try to tell women this and put them up on game. But, you know, we adults, we don't play games around here. But I try to tell women this, and some women don't get it. I'm like, no, that's not true. I'll just wait to find a guy like you. You're one of the worst ones. Not every guy's like you, CGA. Not every guy's like you. There's some good, honest guys out here. And I'll be like, okay, good luck. But you need your super suit on. It's hard to negotiate when your face is running, your mascara is running, your, your half of your makeup is off on my pillowcase. Yep, your eyelashes, one hanging up, one down like this. It's hard to negotiate, and your hair looks like a lion. Your negotiating power is over. Not only that, when the room is filled with the aura and aroma of Pudusi, all right, it's hard to negotiate. When I can smell that stank box just fuming, you can't negotiate. So, yes, I would try to tell people if you wanted to be successful with a guy, you definitely must have to keep as much leverage as you want, as you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to our brother here, uh, Mr. Norton. Shout out to you. I don't know how to pronounce that first name. He says, CGA, thanks for the content. And that Skeletor sound effect is hilarious. Salute. Shout out to you. Silence, you fool. Indeed. (laughs) Indeed. Once a man is busted. Yeah. Once a man is busted, he's his negotiate. You lost all negotiation power. Unless he's fell in love, falling in love. Shout out to our brother. Anthony B says, raise the offering plate. All right, and pass it around. Pass around that offering plate. Pass around that offering plate. Last two or three. This is from today. Shout out to no government name. Coach, I recently moved to Arkansas for a federal job, and all I see is Glocktavius, Pookies, and Straggles. Nothing but black women. It disgusts me. (laughs) And he says on a serious note, it looks like I'm going muck mode for the next five years. You're... 
You're my only saving grace. Hashtag free agent lifestyle for life. Uh Uh-oh, we don't want to get you in trouble out here. I'm wondering where you move from. That is the that's the question right there, because wherever you move from, you're getting a situation where, you know, I would this is I will counsel you. I will counsel you guys, uh, whatever type of women you like, you probably want to either like if you want to be with them, like don't move to an area where the people aren't like that. You're going to be frustrated. It's going to be like a mind F. You're going to be like, damn. And then you'll eventually probably venture out and date women that, you know, you probably wouldn't date. So it's probably good for a little while. But, yeah, go ahead and go monk mode. He probably like Kaylee's. What part of Arkansas? He needs to go by the University of Arkansas. Pig suey. Shout out to Kevin for Phoenix. He says, Coach, at 31 with no kids, it's almost impossible to find a female without one these days. Shaking my head. And they wonder why I'm a free agent for life. Well, the only answer for you, sir, is the junior college. The junior college. Yeah. You know, when you're 31, uh, especially I don't know what your race is, but if you're a 31-year-old black man, it's almost impossible to find a woman that does not have kids. All right. uh, Because in the community, they just say, hey, you can you can you can carry before you marry and it's normal. And then everybody else supposed to overlook this massive mistake. A massive mistake. Shout out to Half Space Will Travel Facts. I can't talk to my best friend's husband. Can't talk to him. Can't talk no sense into his ass. And that was earlier from the day. And shout out to Paul G. Thank you, Paul G. All right. So let me get back to the show. Um, and then uh, I'm going to come back to what's going on here. Uh, the next segment is called. The next segment is called. Trust the logic of a woman and question mark. Somebody needs to fix my heater. My heater is on. (laughs) I need to text my son because the heat is blowing and I got a fan over here. Heat is probably never on. Um, I'm going to probably take a break to turn that shit off. All right. uh, Trust the logic of women. Let's start with this woman here. There's a Russian Natasha and she's going to say what men want to hear. She's going to say what men want to hear, but you got to watch out for Babushka, you got to watch out for Olga. You got to watch out for uh, 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 Anastasia. They're very crafty, but take a listen to this woman here. They will say, I want a guy who's making so much money that I can travel and do whatever I want to do in life. As soon as soon as she gets that guy, she will complain because he's working all the time. He's making money all the time. And he doesn't have the time to just be in her little world for 24 seven because he has stuff to do yeah. to give her all of the traveling and buy everything. So again, oh my God, it's a man's fault. A woman will say, I want a guy who is kind, who's sweet, who doesn't have any bad habits. He just. All right. This woman's reading from a script, by the way, but uh, I get what she's saying here. She's right. Um, You know, I I say a red flag, especially for you youngins. Yeah. Lana is trying to tell you that women that want you around 24 seven are a red flag and you might not see it today, but you're right. You can't win in this scenario because eventually you're not going to be able to become who you need to become. All right, Svetlana, go ahead and get to you reading your script. She just wants to stay at home with the children. She gets a guy. And what does she do? She cheats. Mm. Because it's too boring. He's just too boring. I have nothing in common with him. I don't know why I even choose him. I am just so bored and lonely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Svetlana's good, boy. She'd be like, ba-va-voom, ba-va-voom. All right, and so, yeah, she's right again. Uh, a no-win situation. She's basically saying you can't win. You can't win. All right, so women who want you to not be on social media, who want you to be boring and want you to be to stay at home, and be eventually her feet are going to get put to sleep, and she's going to want excitement, and then she will venture out into these streets, right? In these streets. Uh, that's true, too. What is What, what else you got to say here, Svetlana? You're taking all this time here. He doesn't love me. Men's fault, again. <laughs> she a woman will say i want a guy who's strong and masculine and fully fully in his masculine like a macho a bad boy a chad mm. she gets a guy 
and he's exactly like that yeah and he orders her around and says what he needs to, what he wants to say in a way he wants to say it and oh my god yeah he's so controlling yeah i cannot do anything i cannot say anything i no. cannot wear oh anything he's just putting god. rules on me all right so yeah i mean there's another you can't win too i like you to make decisions i want you to be the leader and i want you to take control i don't never want to pick a restaurant and then of course when you do that you can't wear that you never let me pick the restaurant. You can't tell me what to wear. You're not my daddy. And so she's going into the logic of a woman basically saying, You can't win. Yes, women do get like this. And trust me, the longer you're with them, the more you're going to see this. So they request you. As I say, I have this theory that says women hate the man they create. All right. So this is a coachism that says women hate the men they create. Whatever men that they say they want, men typically try to fit into that. Then you become that, and she hates that. That's basically what Svetlana is talking about, Olga, Anastasia, okay, Natasha. That's basically what she's saying. Woman asks and desires for a certain trait. This is why when women ask for you on the internet, I just want a man, I just want a man that, don't become that man. This is my advice telling you. If you become that man, eventually she's going to hate that man. This is a fact. This is a fact. Svetlana, go ahead and keep spitting here. <laughs> Men's fault. Again, <laughs> it's never these women's fault. No, they will give you a list of list and list yeah. and list and another yes. list on the list of the things you can't do. It can't... Is all yeah, fault. she's it's always your main yeah. Fault. And so when women have lists, it's a red flag. All right, because you become that, she's gonna hate that. Say, because they are triggered, they are offended, they are sensitive, and everything else. And how a man can follow anything no. if she says one thing she gets the thing and yep. then she's upset about it of course i mean listen this is why i tell you i can't let women lead all right they get they again it's kind of like be careful what you ask for you might get it you ask for it you get it i've been there done that ninja i got the championship belt i got the receipts and i'm telling you as men especially men that don't have experience that men that might get lonely maybe i want a relationship and you forget all the bullshit that relationship comes with this is part of the game. This is why even God hasn't been able to please them. They will go against God. They will go against what God gave them. They will complain about being a woman. It's harder for us. It's just horrible. I'm like, can I enjoy my life? Can I live? So they're always in a state of dissatisfaction. In fact, if, if indeed that a woman is satisfied with you, I'm going to tell you how you're going to lose the woman. Okay, I'm not telling you this for uh, purposes of it, but I'm going to tell you how, how, to how they're going to lose it. If, in fact, you find a woman that is enjoying their man, he's everything that I asked for. She's sitting up here like, uh, she's sitting up here like uh, Stephanie Mills. And I never knew love like this before. You open my eyes as Stephanie Mills ass, bitch. Guess what? Her friends are going to sabotage. Her sisters are going to sabotage. Nothing pisses off a happy woman like a miserable woman. Nothing, wait a minute, nothing, mis let me say it again. Nothing pisses off a miserable woman than a happy woman. A happy woman is going to piss a miserable woman off. And she going to come in here and sabotage. And eventually she going to be like, hmm, I bet you he cheating on you. Ain't no man that good. No. Hmm, I bet you that mother sucker with her lips like this. Mm-hmm. Looking like that. And then she going to be like, nah, I got a man. He's mine. You may have had him once, but I got him all the time. <laughs> all right. And she going to blow that shit up, sabotage all that shit. She ain't never going to let that slide. All right. She going to be like, hmm, and he's this and he's that. She going to blow it up. And she going to make her in a miserable situation because miser misery loves company. So even if you give a woman everything and you simp it for her and you bring her flowers, all right, you bring her flowers, you buy her a car, Ninja, you take her on a vacation. She never had to open her wallet or her purse. Ninja, you pay her rent right directly to the rent. You get, you get her login. Baby, change your password to the login. I'm going to change your password, baby. I'm going to pay your rent right now. Here we go, right here. Ain't nothing going on but the rent. Ninja, you paying her rent 
You flying her all the way across the sky, yeah, been around the world, and now, yeah, yeah, first class, business class, private, ninja, you find the charter. Here comes somebody else. Here come her girlfriend. Here come her sister. Here come her mammy. Coming to tear it up. Well, you better make sure he ain't doing that. If he can afford it, yep. They doing a whole recon on your ass, spying. I bet you he doing something. I bet you he ain't at a work meeting. And sadly enough, again, Natasha's trying to tell you, this is what Natasha's telling you. You can't win. Like Rocky Weiss told Rocky against Natasha. You can't win. Yeah, you can't win. And she knows that, and she knows the nature of women. Boy, you got to watch out for them. Yeah, five-star hotels, ninja. Jacuzzi's in the bathroom. You got jacuzzis in the bathroom, ninja. <laughs> and it ain't going to be enough. It's crazy. Trust the logic of a woman part two here. Second video here. Okay, what is this right here? Okay, all right. Oh, okay. This is a woman that's trying to marry a divorced man. A woman who's trying to marry a divorced man and she's encountering problems. Uh, and the problems is basically this guy's going to read it. Am I the a-hole for? Let's continue. My the asshole for digging my heels in about sex in a prenup. I honestly can't believe I'm asking this, but my boyfriend has gotten so mad that I'm feeling a little crazy now. Both 34, he had had a terrible marriage before me that ended in a dead bedroom, and he's determined to never go back to that life again. Understood. I think that sucked for him to experience. So now he wants a prenup and literally write in the prenup that we will have sex. X amount of times a week or else I get absolutely nothing in the divorce. Oh, I had already agreed to a 50 50 prenup of marital assets and we keep what we came into the marriage with. Now that's not enough for him. He wants me to prove that I won't stop having sex with him in the future. I tell him I can't prove the future and putting something in writing doesn't prove that. Now he says I must have a guilty conscience if I won't sign these terms because if I'm so certain it won't happen, then what's the problem? But to me, it makes me feel like a sex slave and not a loved wife or partner. Yeah. So am I the asshole you gotta say no the husband's trauma is his responsibility and it's unfair for him to put that on the wife saying like hey because i had a bad marriage i had a sexless marriage and then it ended up in divorce that you must have to pick up that slack to make sure that i'm better again well it's really fucked up if you start thinking about it even a little bit it's like what if i have covid one week or something like that and i feel like shit, yeah are you gonna force me to have sex that's so fucked up to think about <laughs> absolutely not the asshole op i'd be concerned at staying in this marriage <laughs> am i the asshole Oh, boy, I don't know what happened here, but uh, take a look. <laughs> there you're right here. Somebody says, bros, don't, uh, done for getting married again. Yeah, he's dumb. He's done for getting married again. But so in this situation here, a lot of men believe that this is my, this is my thing. You think you can rationalize. Hold on for a second. Yep. Um, a lot of men think they can rationalize with women. You think you can make a contract with them. There's no contract with them, especially when it comes to sex. So when it comes to sex, for women, they think that you cannot contract that. You can contract everything in a relationship but sex. And even then, when they are the one that's responsible, they don't want a contract. They don't want to sign the prenup. Okay, well, I'll sign it. But for the most part, as you heard, then it was like, well, I don't want to negotiate sex. I feel it's something special that I should gift you. This is crazy, man, and a lot of guys have this hope strategy. This guy's been married before, and he knows what's going to happen. She's going to clamp her legs, and now he's trying to negotiate the prenup. He got the prenup. Now he's like, well, you got to negotiate sex like Hafiz. Remember Hafiz was like, well, I got a contract with her that is not legally binding. You can't take it to court. Nobody can enforce it. You can't sue her on it, but, but I'm going to contract sex with you. Guys, bruh. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Why are you messing with this, guys? Just leave this shit alone. You already know where this is going to go. You're going to marry her. She's going to clamp. Most women clamp on marriages, and they give you what they feel like they're going to give you, and they, they say, fuck it, just jump off a bridge if you can't deal with it, or divorce me and lose. That's where you're at. But this guy knows about it, and they're trying to be like, oh, well, hmm. All right, I want to listen to uh, this part again real quick because I had to turn my air off. This is this is crazy, Hafiz. So for digging my heels in about sex in a prenup, I honestly can't believe I'm asking this, but my boyfriend has gotten so mad that I'm feeling a little crazy now. Both yeah. 34, he had had a terrible marriage before me that ended in a dead bedroom, and he's determined to never go back to that life again. Yeah, see, he's listen, listen, if you're determined to not go back to that life, I'm going to tell you guys and listen to me. 
Do not get married. I'm telling you this from me. Don't get married. Marriage ultimately ends in a sexless marriage at some particular point, whether it starts early or late. It's how it is. But now you don't want to do, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Don't get married, please. Just stay single and go to the JUCO. You're going to be better. You already did this once. It's not the wife. You know, one, one thing that I keep wanting to say here, a lot of people believe in, even when they hear me, that I'm blaming the wives personally. Right, even if I talk about my situation, other than the child custody issues, which I think is egregious, when I talk about marriage, I'm not blaming the person that I was married to, the person, right? I'm blaming the institution. I'm blaming that what we accept as excuses for women to have no, or men for that matter, to have no burden or duty to perform. I'm blaming what we allow marriage to become and that's the experience. I'm not blaming the person who, who was she. And similarly, men who remarry blame the person that they married. Oh, my wife clamped up on me. So in order to prevent it, I'm going to marry again. But hopefully, hoping, hoping that you won't clamp up. Let me tell you something. She going to clamp the fuck up. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> you, you already know this going in. Now you're trying to negotiate it. Brothers. Don't get married, please. You do yourself a favor. Understood. I think that sucked for him to experience. So now he wants a prenup and literally write in the prenup that we will have sex X amount of times a week or else I get absolutely nothing in the divorce. This is stupid, guys. This is dumb. This is not the way you do it. And I'm here to tell you, because not many people do not do this. You cannot even enforce this contract. You have to have sex at the X amount of times. Oh, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be, this is going to be a problem because let's just say, let's just say on this logic, um, you put this in a contract, but let's say you get bored of the sex, but then she says, ha ha ha. Let's say she's an avid, sex. she's a nymphomaniac, but you're tied to her. Let's say she gets fat and overweight and you don't want to hit. Guess what? Now you got to live up to the contract that you put out because by the rule, the woman's going to say, Hey, wait a minute. Maybe you want some side post punani. Now you can't get out of the contract. Um, men get bored in marital sex too. So now you got to live up to a contract that you wrote, man. No, man, this is wild. Guys are out here crazy as hell. Oh, I had already agreed to a 50, 50 prenup of marital assets. And we keep what we came into the marriage with. Now that's not enough for him. He wants me to prove that I won't stop having sex with him in the future. I tell him I can't prove the future and, she can't. So, guys, women cannot prove the future. They don't even know where they're at right now. Ladies, where y'all at? Okay, she can fantasize about what the future is. But again, as you noticed, when it was time for her to be responsible, she got out of there. This is all women. This is why I tell you, man, you guys got to test them in their logic. Oh, I promise you, just you'll be happy in eternal life. They're children. That's a child's fantasy. I'm going to get the Barbie doll. I'm going to get the Cabbage Patch Kid. I'm going to get the damn, uh, I can't remember what the other dolls were. I'm going to get this doll, and I'm going to be happy. They're children. Then you start hitting them with mature situations, and they get stunned. Huh? I can't promise any of that. It's crazy, man. I don't know, man. Guys are, guys are goofy out here. Stop. Stop it. Let me give you the next one, the secret of a middle-aged woman. This is a secret that I revealed, and I'm going to do some super chats. After this, secrets of a middle-aged woman. And here you go right there. There she is, sister. All right, shout out to the sister here. All right, you see the sister? Damn. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to make fun of her here, but. Mm. Well, okay, secrets of middle-aged women. Coach, why don't you date women your age? You a metaphile. What doll was I not thinking of? I can't do it. Not the Bratz doll. It's a very expensive doll, <laughs> right? Uh, but uh, anyway, I can't remember the doll. It was like a doll. It looks like a doll. I don't know. But she was like American girl, American girl. That's the doll I was thinking of. American girl doll. All right. It's expensive for no. Well, anyway, if you're if you have a daughter and they ask you for an American girl doll, then you be prepared to pay a lot of money. All right. Sister, you've been on, on my mind. All right, I hope she doesn't watch this because I'm about to diss. Give me a second here. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up here. Uh, I did find it. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, she's going to catch a stray. Yeah. I think that's what I was looking at earlier there. Is that not it? Did that do well? Give me a second. She's going to say something that I've already told you. Looks about the same here. Let me see here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. But let me stop here. Uh, let's see. Uh, secrets of a middle-aged woman. And this one I told you about. She's going to tell you something that I didn't told y'all about for a very long time. And you thought I was tripping. You thought I was tripping. But this woman's going to tell you right now the secret, the big secret middle-aged women won't tell men. All right, here we go right here. Sister, take it away. To my channel or welcome back to my channel. I was listening to some YouTube videos. Wanted to jump on here about body count because some videos are saying, you know, women have such a high body count and this, that, and the other. Now, I've done videos on this before. I believe that women care more about the future and men care more about our past. And I do believe if a woman has a very promiscuous past and men, that they are likely to repeat it. It's a pattern. Oh. It's a habit. It's almost oh. a character flaw. Oops. Um, it is a character flaw. But one of the biggest secrets that I believe that middle-aged women have, and I can't speak on men, but I, I almost think men do too. Oh. But I'm going to just speak for women or myself. I'll just speak for myself. No, nah, no. Nah. I ain't talking about nobody. No. Nah. We don't tell you. Uh -oh. like, I've never had somebody ask me what my body count is. Um, By the way, I, I don't know why any man would ask a woman what her body count is. It's high. <laughs> All right? It's high. All right? And then just be like, you're normalizing body counts. All right? Uh, but first of all, listen. Uh, these women out here, they the easiest thing a woman can do in her entire life. I'm sorry, I have to cut it off. I have to cut it off. I have to do my show. Yeah, she got yeah, she heard she she gotta unbig her back. Uh, one of the one of the easiest things a woman can ever do when she's completely bored, she can do this. Lay on her back. Meow. If she's hungry, meow. If she's hangry, meow. If she's horny, meow. I mean, Giving up sex is the easiest thing they can do. And yes, women enjoy sex. Kaylin, women enjoy sex. All right. They, they can do it and they can go get it just like that. So with that being said, I don't care what age you are in as a male. A woman's body count is high. And you're, the way you're going to know it's high, <laughs> the way you're going to know it's high is if you get her in the bedroom and whatever she does in there is going to be the indicator of her high body count. Now, the reason I say this is because, because a lot of guys think, I, I hear you guys. You guys will say uh, a body count of three is high. And I'm like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> mm. I'm like, three? Three? Oh, gosh. I mean, that's absolutely, un, you know, it's unfathomable. Maybe if you're 14, 16, three? And you'll be like, 10, 10 is high. And one of the things I'm trying to counsel men is y'all need to, y'all need to chill out. Y'all need to chill out, Ninja. 10, <laughs> right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. And she's going to reveal the secret that I've always said, and she's going to reveal it. The truth about this matter is, let's go ahead and reveal it, sister. This is a four-minute video, so she's going to drag it on. But most women don't even know. They won't even tell you anyway. Because how we count body count is not how you would think. Uh, we uh, only count uh, the relationships. So the relationships that I've been in uh, um, and anybody probably that I've been with, you know, longer than 60 or 90 days. But I'm like, wow, look, what did I tell you? I've been telling you this. This is not a secret either. I mean, I've been telling you this. Many men knew this. I've been saying this, and I've been saying it for decades before I even did YouTube. Women's body count only includes the men that they were in relationships with. They don't include ninjas that they got condom sex from. They don't 
uh, when they sold it, when they were in a bind, when they went to go see Percy Earl, when they did a one night stand, when they were backstage underage adolescent, when they were poor some sugar on me, when they were on the tour bus getting fucked in the back of the tour bus, when they were in the bathroom, when they were in the uh, spin the bottle, when they dropped that neck, when they dropped that neck, that certainly don't it's count that. Q and L. They don't count that. And I've been saying this again. Somebody says CGA wins again. I've been trying to tell you, condom sex sometimes don't count. When they seen their sugar daddy, it don't count. They only count men they've been in relationships with. So when you ask them, and, they, and she was specific, 30 to 90 days, not when they hooked up uh, with, with somebody from the club, none of that. Drunk sex, nope, don't count. Uh, ninjas that uh, they had regret sex with, don't count. If they didn't have sex with them multiple times, don't count. I've been saying this. <laughs> yeah, CGA been saying this. I've been telling you this. And this woman is speaking for, she said, I'm not going to speak for all women but myself. I've been saying this and a lot of guys did not think about it. I mean, you guys didn't think I was right. Here's a, here it is from one of the horse's mouths. They're only counting men that they were in relationships with. And she was specific. At least 30 to 60 days. Not guys that they let stick the head in. Not guys that she only took the Duke shoot only. Not guys that she let bust in her mouth. That doesn't count that. That's why I say, that's why I say, not train games, not orgies, nothing, nothing. It only counts relationship sex. Now, even that could be hairy because they could be with a guy for 10 years and they could be, you know, five times a day for 10 years. That's a lot of sex, right? So is that, is that worse? Or better, because guys are like, how many bodies you had? Well, if you had, if she had one or two men, but they had sex thousands of times, <laughs> right? Y'all, and and guys will say, man, I bet you, I bet you her piece leave is loose. But you'll date a single mother who had a whole baby pushed out between her legs. That's number one, and number two, she probably had lots of sex with that guy. Is hers any looser, or hers are tighter because it was one man or two men? So it's one of these things that men have to understand, and I've been trying to tell y'all this for a long time. Let me go ahead and br- run it back, but I'll let her speak. It's four minutes. She's not going to speak entirely, but here it is. My body count is, um, but most women don't even know. They won't even tell you anyway, because because how we count body count. She said most women don't even know, and it's a fact. Most women don't even know. Now, there's some women that know. Shout out to the women who know. But again, what count are you counting? Let's continue here. I don't want to interrupt the sister. Is not how you would think. Uh, we only count the relationships. So the relationships that I've been in, um, and anybody probably that I've been with, you know, longer than 60 or 90 days. But I'm not counting the one night stand. I'm not counting the friends with benefits. I'm not counting the time I was with my ex. Yeah, don't judge me. I'm not counting that. So when you're hearing about my past, my relationships, I'm talking about the relationships I was in. Yeah, my last relationship was this, that, and the other. But I'm not going to ever share all the little behind the scenes people, like even a man or woman might be married. And I've been married for 15 years. So you assume that they've only been with their spouse. Whereas I have a friend, I've talked about her before, that she is very promiscuous and she is married. And I don't know how many people she slept with. Ooh, hold he's up. He's not leaving her because she's a breadwinner. He's he they just sleeping. <laughs> Brothers, y'all better, y'all better. I'm telling, man. I'm telling you. I be, have I'm not been telling you this. This is a woman who knows women. What do I been telling you? I've been around women all my life. Okay. In a variety of ways. Live with women, married a woman, have female roommates, work with women exclusively. We're almost always the merely brunch the only man around. I've heard enough, brothers. You, you can't be, and I'm, te- I'm, I'm telling y'all, she is not lying. We need these truths. He says, coach was 100% right the whole time. I've been trying to tell y'all, man. I've been trying to tell y'all, and I know y'all gonna be like, this is just one woman. But she telling, she telling y'all, man. She telling y'all. Y'all, we, I'm trying to help you men. I'm trying to help you guys. When, when I tell you I'm really trying to help y'all out here, I'm trying to help y'all. So I said, thank God for social media, and it's an absolute fact. It's an absolute fact. Somebody wants me to send it. What do I tell you about married women, man? I've been telling y'all, bro, y'all don't even want to know. Y'all don't even want to know out here. Let me run it back. Let me run it back. 
Let's run it back. She said something critical here. Relationships I was in. Yeah, my last relationship was this, that, and the other. But I'm not going to ever share all the little behind the scenes people, like even a man or woman might be married. Yeah. Like, I've been married for 15 years. So you assume that they've only been with their spouse. What did I, I've, I've been telling y'all, women be having, um, and when I do it, I say, uh, if you take a woman's life and you say, uh, how many sexual partners a woman can have in a year? And I say, minimum is seven. And I said, if she's married, five. I, who remembers me saying that? I was like, just because she's married doesn't mean she's not getting her body count up. Like, she can have at least two people in a calendar year as a married woman. I, there, there, here he comes. Here he comes. Pause. Whereas I have a friend, and I've talked about her before, that she is very promiscuous, and she is married. And I don't know how many people she slept with. Damn. And he's not leaving her because she's a breadwinner. He's, he, they just sleep in separate rooms, but she's a cheater. And he's been faithful to her. Damn. Mm. Yeah. Brothers. Again, it's guys, again, again, and I'm not doing this to belittle women. And where the, hey, by the way, you know, I have a faithful female audience here. You know, I have a faithful female audience. And guess what? Where they at? Where they at? They quiet as a church mouse pissing on cotton. Do you see them in the comment section? You know they're here. They're here watching me, touching themselves. They're here watching me. They, you, they cannot not watch me. They like daddy. All right, they like daddy out. This is Give daddy out. Daddy. They're here watching, and are they saying anything? Nope. They quiet. <laughs> but they're here man they're, they're watching and they sitting there just mm, you don't see not one of them not me you don't see them where they at mm -hmm. Matt Walsh where you at this is not true <laughs> they stepped out for a minute because they saw me leave Let's continue. And it's just weird, right? So, um, but when people meet her, she's saying, you know, she's been married for all these years and they're like looking at her like she's this faithful, loyal person. And I haven't met, it's, I'm just gonna be honest, some sing, single people are not out here cheating and messing around as bad as married people. Like I have some, I'm telling you, I've heard some stories from my married friends and my single friends, they go to work, go home or go to the gym. But they're not out here running these streets. These are married people you need to watch out for because, like I said, they can hide their body count. You will never know because you would assume if you're only with this person. So, like I said, nobody's ever asked me, but I don't volunteer. Oh, yeah, let me t did I ever tell you about my friend with benefits? Did I ever tell you about my one night stand? Did I tell you when I was messing around with my ex? I'm never going to bring that in the conversation. I'm like, yeah, the last time I talked to somebody was like three years ago and it ended because of that and so they think my that was my last relationship yep. in fact, my, probably my only relationship listen, in a long time right listen you don't know about people i'm messing with right now or the people i messed around with a few months ago they don't know. you don't know that yep and so what, what, what do we tell you when a woman says you know i haven't had a relationship in the last five years you think she ain't had nobody you think she got cobwebs between her legs it's not true in fact, it's more dangerous. You're more likely to believe her body count has exploded in that five years that she hasn't been in a relationship. It's been going crazy, especially if you've seen her a couple times on a dating app. Like, you know, anybody that's on dating apps, she'll be on a dating app a year, and then you'll get off and you'll come back on. Same woman's on there. And you're like, damn, she's still on the dating app? You know why? Oh, I just couldn't find the right guy. How's the dating app going for you? What are you looking for? You know what she's looking for? That's what she's looking for, bro. She's looking to get throttled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> y'all y'all don't realize. None of that. I'm not going to talk about that. So that is one of the biggest secrets of middle-aged women. Yep. They will never tell you that. They're going to talk about I was just married and I was married for this man to this man for 20 years. I was in a relationship for seven years. He ain't never gonna mention who they had on the side when they broke up, when things weren't going right. They ain't gonna tell you that. So anyhow, I thought I'd drop that because I kept hearing about it. I'm like, no, let me just tell yeah. you the truth. 
Yeah. Tell the truth, shame the devil. That's right, Anyhow, sister. Um, be sure to click like and subscribe. Nah, we ain't doing all that, man. Get off my channel. All right. Anyway, no, just shout out to her right there. Uh, I did diss her, but she did hit hit you with that truth right there. Let's let's see what her her name is, Elena Pascal. Don't don't bother her over there, man. Give her give her a shout out for hitting y'all with this truth. Y'all need men need the truth. Men need the truth. A lot of guys will not accept this. You will not accept this, and this is why I don't date tend to take middle-aged women seriously because what I think is, especially when I think of attractive middle-aged women, if I can find an attractive middle-aged woman, I will run away. I will be like, no. And why? You'd be like, coach, man, she fine. Look at Nia Long and look at, they still got it. And look at this. It's a, it's to me, it's a red flag because I know what attractive women do when they're young, especially if they were attractive when they were young. Ninja, I was around when Video Soul was out. I was around when Soul Train was out. I was around when BET After Dark was out and BET, BET Uncut. I was around, you know what I mean, when TRL was popular. I was around when, when the club was popping bottles with Chris Dahl. I was around at the NBA All-Star Games. I, I was around, bro. I, was, I, I know what you was doing, and I don't even have to be know you to know what you were doing and what you had access to. Yep, I knew about Freak Neek. I knew you took trips. Stop. And so if you find an attractive woman that is middle age or going older, this woman been around the block, and she's trying to get you to take a deal that she didn't actually been doing. Like she got 40 years, 30 years, of dropping neck on ninjas. <laughs> Tip drill. Yo. Donnie Simpson had her. Yep, Donnie Simpson had her. Shout out to Donnie Simpson. Donnie Simpson used to bang her out. Talking about, ooh, I want to shake you down. Well, well. All right, Ninja Devontae had her. Pinned to the back with Casey and JoJo. Tag team back again. Bell Biv DeVoe had her. Ninja Jay Z Jigga had her. <laughs> Yo, she was in music videos. She did a little modeling. I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh. As soon as I hear all that, uh uh-uh. uh. As soon as I hear all that, Ninja, uh uh-uh. uh. Eminem and Limp Biscuit, Fred Durst had her. Uh uh-uh. uh. She dropped neck on Fred Durst. I'm out, Ninja. <laughs> All right, and Carson Daly, Ninja, at the same time. Ninja, I ain't trying to have all that. I ain't trying to have all that. Ninja, like, look at her, man. She fine. She bad. She still got it, Ninja. Roast beef, all that, Ninja. She was doing the stanky leg, the Tusi roll, and and she was dancing for Luke, Uncle Luke, Ninja, on the back of in there, and Trick Daddy at the same damn time. Ninja, uh-uh. She had Miami going crazy. <laughs> Hawk probably had her. Hell no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No older, attractive women. No. And if they older and semi-attractive, it's even worse. Ninja, they was on a... <laughs> they was stuck getting stomped on the yard when they was at Southern University. They had the band, the football team, and the coaches. Ninja, uh-uh. Mm. Hell no. Nope. I'm I'm done. I, I, and this, that's the secret of middle-aged women. All right, let me do this, man. Let me get out here and get some super chats here. We got some sponsorships I need to acknowledge. And we're well on to our way of traditional women and why am I single. Thank you for tuning in. Hit the like button. How many people we got watching today? Show well over 2,000 again. There's the number. 14, almost 1,500 on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. Almost a little over 700 on the Notorious channel. They're leaving now. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. We stay at that number constantly. Well, it's really 6,000, but YouTube won't let me have the real numbers. What are we doing here? Shout out to JC says that was a massive turd cutter on that woman. Yeah, that's a big dookie booty. Pumpkin Jason says it's incredible. Uh, He says something. He says, I won, will have her yob. I think you mean a woman will have her job and get some child support, have a little sugar daddy or only fans and might have both. And they're still broke. Well, there you go. You figured it out. You, you figured it out. Your thick skull. 
know that I'm broke. Okay, yes. Dead, flat, stony, broke. I've got $3.85 um, in my a purse. Wo- a woman, oh, the, the deal with women, and I know this, um, I, it, this is why I'm kind of trying to get men to kind of reframe their thoughts about women. Because you think, like, let me say this, because I don't want to look like I'm promoting something to you guys. Let me say it like this. Women do not manage money well, as a general rule. Some men will get married and have the wife manage the money. This is almost a massive mistake. It's, it, the less she knows about the money, the better it is. However, it's tough because women will think you're financially abusing them. They might think that uh, all women think the, the, the pot is bigger than they see. So let's say you don't let them manage the money, but you kind of manage the money and you spend and you buy flop. You know, you start doing things to keep her happy. She thinks there's more money in the pot, and there could be very well more money in the pot. And as a result, what she's going to do is think that she can spend more, and you're keeping it away from it. So that when she spends, you start telling her, hey, control your spending. She's going to say, you're financially abusing me. And the point of this means is she, if she gets control of the access of the funds, she'll blow it. Because she doesn't think further in retirement. She doesn't think about these things, investments, and think about an emergency fund of 18 months to 24 months. She, ah, we don't need that. Uh, six months is good. So she'll start spending, spending, spending. As a result, what I'm telling you is, in general, as a general rule, it doesn't matter if you give the woman $400 or $4,000. Is she going to blow it? Like, you can bank. You can cash it. You can take it to the bank. She's going to blow it. It's all the same. So women will be short. A couple of hundred dollars. They need thousands of dollars. And they'll still be coming up broke. They'll have what they want. They'll get equal pay at the job and still be broke. Oh, it costs more for our haircuts. It's just one of the things you have to deal with and accept as a general rule and apply it as such. So men then look at women that have OnlyFans. And, oh, she getting a bag. And, yes, some women do very well with their bags. But, but then you'll wonder why she got a sugar daddy. Because... I know women that do OnlyFans, they're successful, but they still are kind of broke and they kind of still got to keep that thing going. Um, They got to find ways to make some more money. It's just a it's just a reality. Some women got jobs and child support and they're still broke. And this is why they say on that little old thousand dollars you give me because they're still broke. Right. Uh, They just see money and they spend money. They see money. They don't save money for any day. They, They they're impulsive as a general rule. So, yes. She can have a job and child support and still be struggling. Yes, I know women that make 85K a year and their lights getting fucking turned off. I know it. I know it. I've seen it. So I'm not impressed. I know women that make 85K, but their net worth is negative $85,000 and maybe a negative, a negative six figures because they got student loans and uh, townhouses, one bedroom, three bathroom townhouses, but they make 85K. And that's what that's what it is. So when we call them broke, it's different than a person that is extended out, right? I, I paid all my obligations. I don't have as much disposable income. I don't have a lot of discretionary income, but I've fulfilled all of my obligations. Well, in, as a general rule, you can almost anticipate that a woman doesn't have any disposable or discretionary income. She has a good income, and she still is in a situation of survival. And this is just as a general rule. Um, so apply that rule. It will help you. So there's guys out here that say, coach, you tricking on them or you're giving them money for uh, you're paying for dates. The, the reason why is these men believe that the men, the women are finessing men. And in a sense, yes, there is a finesse thing going on. But in a man's world, in a man's head, an immature man, he believes that if you're doing this, the women are winning. Because they're getting rich off of simps. And I'm here to tell you, as a general rule, women do not get rich off of simps. Listen to me. I'm your big brother. I'm your unk. I'm the dad you never had. Shout out to Tom Likas. I am that guy. I'm telling you, they do not get rich off of simps. Now, they get fed, and they dookie, and they they go to trips and they have experiences and they get a couple of bills paid, but they don't get wealthy. Them bitches splurge because it's not money they see as I'm gonna stack this until I get rich and don't have to do this no more. You, I've seen strippers. I've seen strippers have sugar daddies that gave them fifty grand and they blew it, snorted up their nose and got titty implants and they was broke in in minutes. That money was spent. That money is spent. 
So don't think that they're finessing you and getting rich. That ain't happening. But they are getting fed and they're getting experiences, but they ain't never going to be rich. <laughs> they ain't never getting rich off of no dude, ever. The only way they do it is if they divorce you. And they still, most of them, blow that money. The point being made, you can give them $40 or $4,000. They're going to blow it. You can, you can guarantee it. Take it to the bank. <laughs> Take it to the bank. And then when they come back begging, just kick them in the, in the ding ding. Shout out to JC. You can officially add Sogmeister to your aliases. And that will add it to the dictionary for sure. Right here. Shout out to Alexander Ruffin out here with the sponsorship. I'm rich, bitch. He says, Coach, I'm out here in the Philippines. And Ling Ling asked me, what did she ask you? She said right here. Hi. Wait, she said. What kind of fuck you give me? Yeah, he said, my hotel room locked. And looking like a crime scene, laughing my ass off. American people ain't kind of fuck. Love fuck, hate fuck, sex only fuck, break up fuck, make up fuck, <laughs> drunk fuck, buddy fuck, pity fuck. Yeah, man. My man, Philippines, cha- take, take, take a time out, man. How many five-foot Filipina chicks you can hit in one trip? All right, my man is out there going crazy. All right, he didn't even stick around to hear me read the chat. This ninja clapping so much poon. <laughs> right. Enjoy your poon out there, ninja. I'll give you, I'll give you a since you sponsored, I'll give you a song right there, did you? All right, I might have to pull up a ling ling too. This ninja down there banging poon. All right, anyway. <laughs> Knock on this ninja door. He going through a thing. It's a crime scene in there. Anyway. <laughs> All right, anyway. Shout out to Isaiah Threats, I believe, says, I got flipped off on the freeway. Give me the buzzer. Be safe out there. No road rage. Monstro Lab says, marriage will should be in every school room. Every man should know the marriage will. It's in my book, The Evolution. The marriage will stays and will always stay undefeated. The marriage will, you cannot beat this marriage will. Cannot meet it. Why? Why? Because the bait and switch is always in play. I have sisters or stepsisters. I call them my sisters. I know people are like, I thought you were an only child. Y'all didn't just follow all my shit. And you're like, wait a minute, coach. The story's not adding up. I have stepsisters, but we, we just call each other brother and sister. All right. But we, you know, we, we lived this, we grew up mostly primarily in separate households. They're still my sisters and my brother. All right. But um, one thing you know about women, and I learned this a long time ago. Is that when it's not going their way, their way, they change the rules. When it's not going their way, they change the rules. And this is what happens when you're born. Uh, well, I won't say that. <laughs> I'll be nice because that would have been a little mean here. What I was going to say. How dare you? Anybody ever play? You have sisters. You play a game. Hey, everybody, let's play a game. We're going to play dodgeball. We're going to play tag. We're going to play monkey in the middle. And you have the rules. The rules are set. Everybody agrees to the rules. And you start playing, and they start losing. Inevitably, they're going to start losing. Then they're going to start getting emotional and crying. And then they're going to find a way to let's change the rules to it because make it more fair, but more favorable to them. Now, when they change said rule, When they changed it, they were out. Like they got out. I tagged you out. You know what I mean? Like you're out, sit over there. But what they'll do is, oh, wait a minute. This isn't fair. Let's change the rules so that during the game, this isn't an out. So what's going to happen is, what's going to happen is when you say finally agree and they kick, scream, cry, and snot, you're going to say, okay, we'll change the rule. And then she'll say, so, well, then I'm back in the game. Hold up. Mm. Hold up. You're not back in the game. You're out based on the old rule. Nope, we changed the rule. And they'll be, <laughs> they'll walk their right back. They'll walk their ass back up on the court. You're <laughs> mm. <laughs> sitting there like, and I knew this when I was like 10. 
I knew this when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> so it's like that shit. This is what women do. And by the way, in marriages, they do the exact same thing. <laughs> they do, they're never going to be honest in any negotiation, especially if you don't have the shit written down and they have the agreement and they thumbprint on it. <laughs> you be like, nah, baby, you was out in the game. Well, we changed the rules, so I ain't back in. Walk back on the court. With they big ass heads and they hair just flopping like, and then what does it do? It takes all the fun out of the game, and let them win on the new rules. <laughs> I won, I won. Let them win. Let them win on the new rules. So they made the new rule and they win. They'll jump up and down and be in your face. Ha ha ha! I won, and you're like the only reason you won is because we changed the rules. The only reason you won is because we propped you up. No, you did, and I did it all by myself, and you didn't have to do. They're funny characters, bro. They're funny. <laughs> all right, anyway, they're funny with it, bro. They'll act like they won fair and square. You can't win. They're bad. They're bad at it. But you, know, the reality is men are weak to this. This is, the, this is the true story. We're weak to this. You're weak to it, and you succumb, and you trust them. You trust that they're going to be, um, you trust that they're going to be fair. And they, they aren't fair. Prime example is that feminism was supposed to bring equality. It's not what it means. Feminism means equality for all people. Now, when they were losing and it was catching L's and there was a pay gap and women didn't own property and women didn't get college degrees at a clip of, clip of two to one, men were overeducated and men were getting bank loans and men were getting student loans. When it wasn't fair, they were calling that shit out. It's not fair. It's not equal. We demand equality. Okay. Now, all of the all of the measurements of what was equality, where they were losing, they're now winning. They get more degrees. They buy more home or they own more homes. They they're they're getting more pay in certain industries like OnlyFans and entertainment and all that shit. They're getting more pay. They get more pay than they ever did. It's almost equal. And in some cases, they get more when the, when the company's investigated. All of the, I, I keep losing the word, but all of the metrics that were unfair and unequal are now equalized or the women are better at it. The women are better at it or the, the women are leading where it's unequal for men. Now, have you heard them one time say, you know what? We went too far. This isn't fair. We need to equalize this. Not once. Mm. not once what do they do they throw it in your face we get more degrees than you and we make more money than you and we buy own more homes than you and we got better jobs than you hmm? am i am i lying am i lying so again it's never about fair or equal and it never was the minute they get the advantage they throw it in your face you stupid, you broke, you dusty, women are out here getting it, and y'all ain't getting it, and y'all need to get better. Wait a minute, we need to get better? I thought y'all need to make it equal. I thought that's what we were doing. <laughs> and it's never about that. So that's, that's understand what it is with them, and I know that. That's why I never feel bad for them when they get the short end of the stick. It's most of the time they created it. <laughs> here we go right here. All right, what are we doing? Jeff, the producer says, Coach done told y'all, and y'all don't want to listen. Coach then told y'all, the dictator said, speaking of body count, what, uh, where is our favorite gordita? She wants you to know it's more than a fat chin chubby fingers out there. It's more than the 10 fingers. It's more than the 10 fingers. Yes, it's more than the 10 fingers. Shout out to Dwayne Rhodes when it says, when CGA said women have sex like cats, mic drop. They have sex like cats. And matter of fact, how many times in your life have you, I mean, most of the times, you know, if your homeboy was getting some, he either told you he got some or he was like, don't come in here. All right. Stay out. You know what I mean? Your roommate was getting some. You almost inevitably have popped up and was like. Heard some woman getting her cheeks clapped and it was your homeboy came out like. Oh. Now, women don't do that. They keep that shit a secret, at least away from men. They'll tell another woman. But have y'all hopped up on something, popped up on a woman having sex? The only time I could think of one is when my neighbor was getting her cheeks clapped. All right. And she was just a screaming and this ninja was, oh, oh, like I've heard that a few times. But you don't pop up on women 
just getting her cheeks clapped. But there, it's happening. It's happening. I once rented a hotel room. This ninja was clapping the shit out of some girl's cheeks one day. I was like, damn, all nighter. I was like, I couldn't go to sleep. But most of the time, it doesn't happen. You don't see it happen because it's pretty much quick for the majority of time. You don't see it happening. And women are good at it because they wait to the cover of night. They wait for the cover of night. You guys will do it midday, mid-afternoon, walking down the street. A woman looks at you and say, come on, you'll go in the bushes, in the mud. You'll go on a haystack. You don't care. You'll go in the back seat of a Jeep. You don't care. You'll go anywhere. Women will wait for the cover of night, 930, and they start texting. They start getting ninjas in, sneaking ninjas in. Okay, They go on trips. They go out of the area code. They go out of the zip code. They go over there. They get what they need to get done. They come back. They eating, they get eating Fruit Loops and a bowl of dry cereal. They don't give a fuck. They, <laughs> they shower up, wash up. Be sitting on the couch with their pajamas on and a bonnet or their hair up in a pineapple. Up, dude. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they don't do they, they, You ain't going to see them. You ain't going to catch one. Don't try, try, don't try to catch your wife cheating. You ain't going to see them. They're like cats. Cats be out there, disappear all day. Where the hell this damn cat? Next time you see them, you walk in the door, cat just... Licking, washing up. <laughs> it's like, okay. Next thing you know, cat's pregnant. Like, wait a minute. Mr. Bojangles, white shoes, why you pregnant? <laughs> every now and then during the summer, you hear them in the gutter. Every now and then. Once every five years, you hear her getting them cheeks clap. Dog come around. Dog come around. All right, this is good enough spot right here. Get the right to humping. Broad daylight. You just walking the dog on a leash. They. All right, we'll do it right here. <laughs> Rear right on up. This will be a good spot. I'm like, you're on a leash. Everybody can see you. You're in broad daylight. And you're going to just get it on right now. <laughs> dog don't give a rat's ass. And dogs are like us. Y'all looking for a choosing signal. Did she look at me? Did she look at me? Oh, she wants some. You want some. You want some. You want some. You want some. You walking out. You ever see a cat sniff another cat? Cat just be stretching like, mm. I think I'm going to go get my cheeks clapped. And then they go over there. Come on back. Ninja. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he said. Oh, man. This is the spot. All right. Dogs are going right now. That's how men work. That's how women work. That's the difference. You will never know if a woman got her cheeks clapped. All right. What are we doing here? This show is off the rails. Shout out to the dictator says. Uh, sorry. John Doe says, Matt Walsh and the Daily Wire crew did a video speaking against RP content. I guess they don't have anything better to do. It was completely biased. Candace Owens was the only voice of reason. Shout out to those monkey simp ass ninjas. Matt Walsh. Monkey simp. Monkey simps. JC says, Simon Cowell and Ryan Seacrest had her. Yep. Dude, I bumped into a woman and says, oh, it was an exclusive neighborhood. If you've never been to an exclusive one of these white, uh, white bread, uh, desperate housewife, uh, Universal Studios communities. And uh, it was a white woman, and she, she was an older white woman, you know, by, uh, attractive, uh, thicker, curly hair, blonde curly hair. And uh, I was a fitness trainer in this gym, so people knew me and people were comfortable with me. So they would talk to me and, oh, you know, you know that's how they deal with stuff. But anyway, the story was, she was like, oh, yeah, my, my daughter's dating Ryan Seacrest. And so in this community, it's common that, it wouldn't be cap, but I always thought Ryan Seacrest had a little sugar in his tank. So I was kind of like, and um, she was talking about, they went to some show or whatever. And she showed me the picture and it was a black woman. It was a, it was a, so the woman was, the woman was white, but the woman, the daughter was mixed. She was a mulatto. She was an exotical. 
And so the dad was obviously a black male or something like that. They had black in the family. And she was fine as hell. I was like, damn. <laughs> All right. I was like, that's your daughter? I was like, I guess I can't fix this herbine. I can't fix this herbine. Let me see here. He had a black girlfriend at the time. She was good looking. What was her name? But anyway, I met her mom. Yeah, there she is, right? Is that her? Is that her? Yeah, this is well, yeah, she's a mulao. This is this is the woman here that I saw, that I saw the picture. I was I was standing next to her mom on a treadmill <laughs> next to my client. But I think she's I think she has some black in her. I, I don't know. She looked like she did, but this this is the woman. But that was Ryan Seacrest's girlfriend. Anyway, at the time. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, I don't know, Ryan. I don't know. But uh, anyway, let's, is that her? She, I thought she was black. Maybe that was the picture here because she looking white than the mother sucker. All right, anyway, I thought she was a mulao because that was the picture I saw. But she looked white. She a flatback too. I thought she was black. Maybe not. Maybe that was the picture she showed me. But there he is right there. Oh, by the way, Ryan Seacrest is short. He's like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, well, that's short for most men. For most men, that's under the normal height. <laughs> that's or that's that's under the uh, the average height. I didn't think he was a shorter male either, so I was surprised when she was talking about that. All right, but uh, anyway, that was that's my story on that. I don't know why I told it, but I do have some super chats to talk about. <laughs> I think somebody mentioned Ryan Seacrest. That was kind of why I mentioned it. He said, "Isn't he reading Rainbow?" I mean, that's what I would have thought. But he definitely has a girlfriend that he parades around. A flat back. Yeah, she looks white now. I thought maybe in the picture I saw that she could have been mixed, but maybe I'm, I, I'm definitely wrong now looking at her more closely. But again, I just looked at the picture and I was like, she looks mixed. All right, anyway. Kayla says, we must come to the realization that if we want monogamous marriages, uh, sex must be a duty. Kayla has the, your, your, your messages... <laughs> Your messages are very well thought out. If you want monogamous marriages, sex must be a duty. While women do, uh, while women don't want it to be that way, why should men continually to provide when they don't always feel good, but it's still expected to be faithful when their wives are wishy washy with the peace leave? Has anybody in here been married? All right. Has anybody in here been married? All right, I want you guys to warn these men. And you can speak up. If you have been married and you have not experienced a sexless marriage, um, you can speak up as well. But what a lot of men think marriage is, it is not. You think you're going to be boning your wife all the time. And I'm just here to tell you, you're going to go in, you're going to go into a drought. You're going to go into times where you don't have sex. And it's for a variety of reasons. Let these guys know. And, and the reason why I'm speaking out for this is because many men are misguided. And you don't understand this. Sometimes you don't even want to deal or talk with each other. Sometimes you might get into an argument. Sometimes some life distracts you. Okay, you're wanting a promotion. There's tight budgets. Um, if you have kids, this could be a major distraction. And it could make people put it on the back burner. If one or two of you are having an affair, emotional, financial, or whatnot, physical, it could lead to a, a drought. And so it is sex, sexless, not by definition, but it certainly is a drought. Then you get comfortable. People get fat. Um, there, dude, there's a variety of reasons, and I'm not making excuses, but it's just a reality. Sometimes you go on a run where it's three or four days and you're after each other. But you also have to understand the woman is not a robot. She shits. She gets diarrhea. Women get sick a lot. They get cramps, urinary tract infections, STDs from other ninjas. They get moody. Um, they get postpartum depression, regular depression. They work. They got other jobs. You know what I mean? It's, it is crazy. And you ain't getting very much succeed. And if you have kids, okay, if you have kids, you got to add that on 
because kids are exhausting. You guys aren't robots. Them kids wear your ass out. When you have young kids and you finally put them to bed, do you be like, oof, and you only dealt with them from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock or 9.30 or whatever the hell their bedtime is. If you have teenagers, how the hell are you getting sex in? Them teenagers be up all night, walking up and down, going to get drinks of water. You ain't going to be up there just <laughs> clapping the hell out of your wife. You got bedrooms next door. I mean, <laughs> then they got games and leagues and, dude, it, you, you go into a, and it becomes then duty. Uh, sometimes then you have to schedule it. It, yeah, it ain't going to be pretty either. Ain't nobody going to shower. Okay, hurry up. Let's get one in. It gets really, really, really difficult for you to get that type of consistency. So you almost have to depend on like a couple times a month that you're on the same wavelength and you have the same amount of energy. And I want to say this is because it's easy to blame the woman. It's easy to blame the man. But I say in relationships, when you cohabitate, real life happens. Real life happens, and this is not a fairy tale. Ninja, your energy is going to be up. You're going to be working. Some people get up early for work. Some people stay up late. You're almost almost rarely ever locked in, and so then you start scheduling it, and then it becomes routine and mundane. The woman's piece leave dry as hell because she's not in it, but she's like, I got to do it. You can't get it up because you want to bang the bank teller you want to bang the bank teller you saw and you trying to imagine the bank teller that you saw earlier this week and not your wife. And then let alone if one of you two people are out of shape, it's, it's real life. It's real life. And people say, well, you're going to be here tomorrow. Let's try tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes, let's try tomorrow. And then all of a sudden it's three weeks of tomorrow. Then all of a sudden you done jerked it off to your favorite only fans girl. And now you can't get your stuff up. It's Limp biscuit, And then your wife's like, how about we have sex tonight? And you're like, mm. so then you got to push it off and come up with an excuse. Well, it is not, <laughs> it is not what you think. Same thing about if you move a girlfriend in, you can forget about it. The first two months is going to be like jackrabbits. And then when you start paying a couple of bills and you start telling her to kick in a couple of more dollars, you ran the air conditioning more, so you you owe this. Then you start talking about chores and uh, dinner. It's a wrap. That sex is going to plummet. So first two months you moved in, y'all was going crazy. It was She was all giggly and happy. Now all of a sudden you didn't take the trash out one day. She left the dishes. She didn't make you dinner. I, the bills need to be due. Y'all short on rent. Good luck. Shit's going to go collide. It's going to go kaboom. And I'm telling you this, not as to blame women. I'm telling you, guys, that is real life. Stop expecting that you're just going to be out there clapping cheeks all day because you got you a little girlfriend and you got you a little roommate and you got you a little wife and a fiance. That is the actual fact, <laughs> right? And I just call it real life happens. Soon as real life shows up, brothers, you got real life obligations. It ain't time to have no frisky ass fun. We got to figure out how we going to make rent tomorrow. That means no pudussy. <laughs> okay. There's no clean towels. There's no, uh, she just put new sheets on the bed. That's going to prevent her from wanting to have sex on that bed. I'm just letting you know. She just put new sheets on the bed. You walk in, hi, honey, jump on the bed. And she's like, I just put new sheets on. And you're like, and? Well, these are clean sheets. The last sheets were dirty. We were dirtied them up, and it's been too long. I just put these clean sheets on. All right, bend over, grab your ankles. <laughs> That's disrespectful. You look at me like a piece of meat. I'm, I'm bruh. Tell these guys. Tell these guys that I'm not lying because these guys, you guys have it all mixed up. You guys have it all mixed up. Meanwhile, she didn't duck sick somebody in her work parking lot at lunch. She wasn't worried about the sheets then. 
Yeah, screwing every night is a fantasy. This is it's non-existent. This doesn't exist. It does it only maybe in fairy tales. I got to get some Venmos over here and probably some cash apps. So bear with me. And I got time today. Remember, so chill. We chilling today. Yeah, I got time. Good. All right, we got uh, uh, Jonathan. Jonathan Ellison says the audacity of hoes. All right, that should be a bestseller. Where we got here, Macaroni Tony. Oh, wait a minute. Go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Go back. Go back. Go back. Oh, Macaroni Tony's kicking it in here. He says, once again, you're right. Older lions will challenge young lions for territory. The loser is castrated and forfeits the land uh, and the lionesses. That's the alpha mindset. And he says, no idea why she gave me the phone. Drunk people are weird for my own peace. I never looked. Not my business. We good. But you would have found a bunch of ninjas in that phone. He also adds, take a victory lap, coach. Why? Because you told us. Make sure you get a background check. 52 things to do before marriage. And I want to let you guys know, I'm offering a free book. Macaroni Tony done told y'all. It is not a thick book. She ain't thick. But if you go to my website, gregadams1.com, you will find my new, my old new website is back. And indeed, there's a book right there. You can get it. Free ebook. It's like 20 something pages. And there should be a video. Get your email security very low, meaning that if you have a spam blocker, you're not going to get the email. You're not going to get the book. And don't email me and say you didn't get it because I'm not going to see it. But um, 52 things that men must do before marriage. Fill that out. You're going to get the book. It's a it's a clinic on what how men should approach marriage. It should what is what should be told to young men about the realities of marriage, because most men find out the realities of marriage. After they get married, I'm here doing a service to you to let you know that, no, it ain't just me. Most men get stuck and they can't get out of it because they didn't do their due diligence and they led with the hope strategy. No government name. I currently I'm currently learning four very hard lessons. You can't turn a 304 into a housewife. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. She's not yours. It's just your turn. And the only way to win is to not play the game. I'm so glad I found your channel. I'm so glad I found your channel. Faith says, Coach, that skit just goes to show the truth behind the women's, uh, the women kicking their man out of the household many years ago for government money. They preferred the money over the father raising their child and are still doing so. Sick and sad world. Again, thank you, Faith. And that's one of our faithful female followers, that the, the phrase is this, single motherhood is a choice. Many times they chose the money. Yeah. And it, uh, women chose the money over fathers. They did. They, they chose the money over fathers. I mean, I've done extreme breakdowns on this one, but women choose the money over fathers. They're like, oh, I can get an extra three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. Now, eventually, they're going to realize that it's not enough money. And then they're going to complain about it. Well, you still need to pay. You still need to be here. Baby, child support or money, choose one. I'm sorry, child support or father, choose one. You want a dad in the kid's life or you want child support? It ain't going to be both. So then they start double dipping. Okay, but women chosen. And if you don't know, if you don't understand this, there's a song by Gladys Knight and the Pimps. (laughs) When I was a kid, I thought it was Gladys Knight and the Pimps. I said, wow. But um, in this song, it's called Mr. Welfare Man. And indeed, child support is welfare. It's welfare. That's all it is. Most of the time, they're connected to each other in the sense that your girlfriend or baby mama or ex-wife will not take you off of child support because she's getting welfare benefits from it. Or sometimes the, the state is giving her benefits and you're reimbursing those benefits that she's getting through child support TANF. So they're both connected. So why why won't your baby mama get take you off of child support? It's because she does qualify for like half off of gas and electric, rent vouchers, low income rent, section eight, fucking free daycare, free lunch for the kids at the school. This is a reality. This is how they pass their weights through life. They will never tell you this. I'm here to tell you that's why they don't take you off child support because they're finessing the goddamn social services. That's why. The AKA the welfare. And, and here's the deal. Uh, Miss Gladys Knight and the Pips had a song called Mr. Welfare Man. Back 
Um, and it was, I think, I guess Curtis Mayfield was on it, but it was from a movie called Claudine with James Earl Jones and Diane Carroll, in which James Earl Jones was trying to be a stepfather. I believe he was trying to be a stepfather to Diane Carroll's character. Um, and they lived in the projects, but James Earl Jones was a garbage man and he was just trying to make it through, but his baby mama was killing him on child support. Yes, yeah, connected to EBT, WIC, food stamps, child support's connected to that, meaning that they can't get access to those things until there's child support order. All right, so I'm giving y'all, I'm giving y'all the game, right? It's part, and then they budget that as a, 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 they budget child support as an, um, as income, which is foolish. It's not income. It's for the child, right? So then they'll say, well, I have to pay rent through my child support and I have to support my kid through my child support, bruh. So anyway, Mr. Welfare Man was on the soundtrack of the movie Claudine. If you guys like older movies from the 1970s, James Earl Jones played a garbage man who was just trying to get through the system. But the woman in his life, his previous wife or baby mother, was using the system against him and handcuffing him. Back before the woke culture and feminism got a hold of movies, they actually told the truth, the true picturehood, the true picture of what happened in the black community, which was women leaned on welfare. In fact, the song in the that Gladys Knight sang was that women should not go to the government for help. They should keep their man in the house. Huh? Are y'all y'all ain't y'all ain't with it? Y'all don't even know. And I'm gonna sing you some. I'm gonna I'm gonna read some lyrics. They just keep on saying I'm a lazy woman. Don't love my children. I'm mentally unfit. I must divorce him. Cut all my ties with him because his ways. They made me say it's hard. It's a hard sacrifice. Let me get into it real quick. It says right here. It says right here. They tried to. It says society gave us no choice. Tried to silence my voice. Pushed me on the welfare. Pushed me on the welfare. I'm so tired. I'm so tired of trying to prove my equal rights. Trying, uh, though, I made some mistakes for goodness sakes. Why should they help mess up my life? So keep. Away from me, Mr. Welfare. So she's, si she's sounding the alarm in this song. Probably wasn't written by her. Probably was written by Curtis Mayfield. Keep me away. Keep away from me, Mr. Welfare. Did you hear me? Keep away from me, Mr. Welfare. Holding me back, using your tact to make me live against my will. If that's how it goes, child. I don't know. I can't concede my life's for real. It's like a private eye for the FBI, just as envious as the Ku Klux Klan. Though I'm of pleasant fate, it's hard to relate. I'll do the very best I can. So keep away from me, Mr. Welfare. Mm. I'm not going to sing that song because I don't have the cadence. But... Today's woman uses the welfare against the man in place of the man. And so now that they've hooked on it, Gladys Knight warned them. Now they're hooked on it. And now they see men as an access to the welfare. It's, it's a choice. Single motherhood is a choice. Single motherhood is a choice. And again, single motherhood is a choice. It's, it's what it is. But if you look at it, a lot of people don't know this. Again, a lot of y'all Bamas don't realize you were migrants not that long ago. <laughs> a lot of you Bama-ass Negroes don't realize y'all were migrants and treated as such for not too long as y'all crawled out of the caves and hills of the South and had no direction and invaded cities and infected downtown areas, and now y'all act like they're gentrifying areas that you are owned and, and that are rightly yours, and you didn't own it. Ninja, you were migrants to it not that long ago. But I'm here to educate y'all. Ninjas be saying I can't read. Ninja, you try to read lyrics. <laughs> you try to read lyrics. Lyrics are one of the hardest things to read. Come on, guys. All right, but anyway, I'm going to start banning y'all ninjas when you say it because I'm, I'm heated. It's hard to do. Lyrics are not easy to read. <laughs> Come on, Jesus Christ. All right, but anyway. Anyway. But yeah, y'all crawled out of the caves of the South in the muck and mire of the South as migrants went and destroyed every cotton-picking city up under the sun and then mad that the white folks coming back to claim it when you destroyed it. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> All right, anyway. Mm. 
<laughs> All right, yes, you destroyed it. But you were migrants not that long ago. Let's keep on your necks, Ninja. Let's wake up. Wake up. <laughs> I'm here to educate you, Ninja. Your great granny or your grandmama came from the Bama ass South and invaded the Northwest, the West Coast, and the Midwest, tore up every city in sight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, let me stop. Then get on air and got to them cities and got on welfare and turned these men into I don't know what. Sold these men out. You got to these new cities and sold these men out for welfare. And then y'all like, what happened to the community? Well, what happened to the community? That's a good-ass cotton-picking question. <laughs> All right, what happened to it? And don't lie to me, Ninja. I'm telling you the truth. They leaving now. They don't want to hear this part. How you go up into Baltimore and then jump on the welfare and turn your men into alcoholics? How y'all do that in one fell swoop in 20 years? 20 years. Then y'all ninjas, brand new ninjas, don't even know what happened. Go blame your great grandmammy and your grandmammy. All right, anyway, let me stop. All right, shout out to uh, Faith says, uh, check out Candace Owen, Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro talking about the RP. Matt pretty much said he gets the RP. Uh, he gets the RP's take on marriage concerning the courts and divorce, but he still believes in preserving family. Candace Owens. Had some good talking points. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. I'll check it out, man. I heard that. That was crazy. All right, anyway. The Dark Side Foundation says, Coach, that gump is an idiot for negotiating a prenup with a 34-year-old. Uh, why is he arguing? Just state your terms and walk away. If they disagree. A woman don't take your offer, bounce. All she had to offer was cat. And that can be found anywhere on discount. I don't know why y'all trying to always negotiate with women, man. Just tell them what it is, and if they don't like it, they can kick rocks. It's crazy. It's crazy. Not anyway. <laughs> Just anyway, anyway. They taking our cities, man. Yeah. All right, anyway. Where's Dr. Umar? I'll be going in on everybody. I'm creating too many enemies. Don't make enemies with me. Uh, let's see here. All right, yeah, anyway. Yeah, guys, ne stop negotiating with women. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. What's in the next ca category here? What's in the next category? I'm just trying to slap y'all awake. I'm just trying to slap y'all awake. That's all I'm trying to do. Because if I write it in the book, oh, in the book, I try to slap y'all awake. Let's say what I'm saying is halfway true, which it is halfway true. At least minimally, it's halfway true. Ninja, what could you do with this information? This could actually change your world if you actually knew what, what I was saying was halfway true. Now, it is damn near almost, almost accurate. Okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But think of what your mind can do when you actually wake up to the truth. Most of y'all ninjas don't know history past the year 1995, but that's neither here nor there. All right, most of y'all don't know a cotton-picking thing, but just to slap you awake, most of you people need to be slapped awake with, the, with, with some sort of truth. Anyway. But I have, to, I have to slap you with it. Pause. All right, I got to punch you in the chest with it so that when you go look at it, when you go back and look at it, you're going to find out I was right. Then you got to crawl back in here with your ego check. But let's talk about it. Women want to be traditional. Women want to be traditional. Here it is right here. We have a sister. Sister girl. Check out her hair. Oh, she got a head full of hair. My husband doesn't cook or clean. Let's listen to it. 
husband doesn't cook or clean and he's still an amazing husband. Here's why. He's a provider. He makes sure that all of our bills are paid, that we have all the food that we need, the clothes that we need, and we are always taken care of. Number two, he cares about my emotional, spiritual, and physical well-being. Not just mine, but our babies too. And number three, he's fun. He loves to take us on little adventures and he loves to get us little treats and do so many fun things with us. My husband doesn't cook or clean, and he's still an amazing husband. All right, there, so there you go right there. Um, I think I saw her husband. He definitely is going to be uh, a white male. I think he's a white male. I'm looking at a uh, exotical, mulatical, and she's barely black. So, you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, just pointing that out. She looks like she's mixed as well. And now you have a 73%. This is what the exoticals were arguing. That baby's 25% black. But if according to the one drop rule, that baby going to grow up whiter than most black people, uh, my, whiter than most white people, I should say. But this is a traditional woman. He doesn't cook or clean. He's an amazing husband. She's saying that now. All right. The only thing is the bait and switch is always in play. The bait and switch is always in play. But she's dressed traditionally. She looks like she makes bread. She looks happy. She looks, looks content. And as long as she doesn't, fall into, hey, I want my own money. I want my own control in this marriage. I want my own voice. This can work. I just think that it's still the Matt Walsh's of the world don't understand that. I see that this is a young baby. This is a young baby because once this kid starts to age, her things are going to change. Her expectations and what she desires from life can change, and that could rupture your marriage. That's all. Yeah, it, it, that's, the, that's the only problem I see with this. All right, and this one says, girl, I'm sorry. My husband does all of that and cooks and cleans, but good for you. Glad you're happy. You see this right here? You see this right here? <laughs> uh, they cannot let a woman be happy at all. Oh, you still losing because my husband cooks and cleans. So women still see, some women still see this as, um, look at this. Why do you feel the need to come online and tell us this? Like who asked you? Okay, women hate married. Uh, women hate married women. <laughs> women hate mar again. Women hate women that have what they believe is their own sense of happiness. Okay, it's sad that most women can't manage to do the housework their own and expect the husband to do the cleaning after eight hours of work. All right, so you you see what's going on here. You see what's happening here. So even when a woman chooses, which is the odd thing about feminism. This is the odd thing about feminism. Because they're saying feminism gives women choice. However, when they make this choice, it's inevitably the wrong choice. They will come out and attack this woman. The part, this is the sad part about being traditional. So if you're a male and you want a traditional woman and she chooses to be traditional, she's going to get what I call in the marriage will. She's going to become the feminist either that someone's going to introduce her to feminism Right, She can meet a professor at her college. She can meet a 304 who is a housewife. She can meet a, fem a married, because feminist women, are fem there are some married feminists. Okay, and um, a college professor will do it, a 304, that's a, a, a skeezer wife who was a 304 in her past. And if you look here, it says right here, wife becomes a feminist. So she'll start saying, well, I don't want to cook or clean and I want my own money. And I, like she'll start saying some really some feminist shit. And so when then when you go back to feminism and you say, I thought feminism was about giving women a choice. And it's really not because if this woman jumps up in here and says, I don't do any cooking or cleaning, they will attack her. <laughs> they, they will attack her like, wow. And they will say, you're making the wrong choice. You're too young and dumb. You should enjoy your tunnies. You should fornicate. You should get all the sex out. You should make it. You should make him. Where was that other woman? My husband does that and cooks and cleans. So I got to one up you. You getting a bad deal. Where is it at? Where's that woman? And of course, look at all oh, a ling ling. Look at a goofy ass ninja, a, a, a geek, a geek. So she, I found a man that cooks, cleans and works and brings me the money. You see how this works. So you guys want traditional women very bad. It's very difficult to maintain and keep a traditional woman because women don't believe that this is a good choice. But feminism was about keeping, um, giving them choices. All right, what are we doing here?
Next one, here's another one. Traditional woman says, I don't want a job. I, I, I don't want to be a corporate girly. She's choosing. Okay. I don't want to be a corporate girly. I don't want to climb the ladder. I don't want to be a boss babe. I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to be the breadwinner. I do not want to do that. You know what I want to do? I want to be home. I want to be cooking in the kitchen. I want to be cleaning. I want to be shopping. I want to be making brownies. I want to be cooking dinner, making homemade meals every night. I don't want a job. I don't want to be a corporate girly. I don't want to climb the ladder. I don't want to be a boss babe. I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to be the breadwinner. I do not want to do that. You know? Now, this is not even a, uh, is she Ling Ling? She looks like a mix between a Ling Ling and a Gordita, a little Filipina, maybe Korean. Looks like she's Korean. Um, what, what, what's happening here is this woman's content. She's content doing majoring in the minors for the most part. Oh, it's just as important. Shut up. All right, hold on for a second. Let me get y'all in just real quick. It's just as important. It's equally important. Silence, you fool. All right, man, shut up with that shit. This ain't a contest. This ain't no contest. Just do what we supposed to do out here. Shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> All right, uh, so you got that going on here. But she's like, I don't want to chase the, the, the dream that most corporate women are miserable about. We're seeing today that women have pursued that and thought they were going to be CEO at 30. And most people are incapable of pulling that off. So then they are miserable or they're caught in a trap. They're caught in a rat race. They're a cog. So then they want to double back to this. Now, she is saying, I'm going to start off as this. The danger is she could flip and go back and say, this is just not enough for me. And then it could become a problem for you because women that choose this when they're younger, they certainly do change and or the situation changes. It could be a situation where she does this for a decade or two and then says no more. Okay, it happens. And the economy is another issue. So I don't know if she is. Let me see here. Let's see if she's married. Let's see if she's married. Just as a means of investigation here. Some women like doing this stuff. Some women do film, find themselves in their femininity. Um, I do see a man in her life. There is a man and she is married or at least engaged. All right. She is at least engaged. All right. So she has a definitely a boyfriend. All right. And she's always in the kitchen. It looks like she looks like a tiny Pina or Korean chick. Um, she does look like a small town chick here. I'm not, I'm not trying to advertise for her. So I'm not showing you. All right. But she definitely has a engagement ring an engagement ring mm -hmm. she's japanese Jap japan japanese all right so uh there you go right there and uh let's see if there's any haters in the comments right here it says right here this i love uh but no cleaning all right psyops ladies gentlemen move on so this guy's saying capity cap cap or is this a man or a woman i can't tell this looks to be a man, all right? Uh, men wear their hair out like women so much, I can't tell. All right, so he says, psyops, ladies and gentlemen, move on. 100% correct. Uh, here's my thing, then. If you want a woman like this, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Equality means we get to do all of those things and hold down a full-time job. Yes. All right, woman that's got caught into feminism. We got girls. This woman says, I'm a feminist, and this is great. Feminism is about having the choice of what you want to do. You do you. Uh, this is a backhanded compliment. This is a backhanded slap. You see this right here? This is what you have to, if you want traditional woman, right, or what, you, what we call a traditional woman, you got to deal with other women. I want you to read this comment. This is not a supportive comment. I don't think this is. This is a. Very passive aggressive, backhanded slap at this woman. <laughs> and this is the type of shit that you're gonna have to put up with. And if your woman is, you know, you bring her Fobby fresh off the boat, you go passport bro and bring her ass back for some dumb odd ass reason. Even Eddie Murphy said, You bring a woman back to this feminist country, she's gonna be saying, Eddie, I want half. I'm a feminist and this is great. Period. Feminism is about having the choice um, of what you want to do, period. You do you. Yeah. You do you. That is not a supportive statement. 
That's not. So watch out for that. Yeah, that's jealous. That's miserable. That's a feminist backhanded compliment. That is in no deed a support, supportive statement. I couldn't do it, but you do it. I couldn't be happy doing some shit like that, but you do it. So that's what you have to actually put up with when you're dealing with uh, the modern world where men are, I think men desire traditional women. Black men, on the other hand, are monkey ass simps all right because you will mostly hear black men tap dancing shuffling i'm i'm gonna attack ninjas again and they'd be like i like it when a woman's got her own money i like it when a woman got her own job it you know why because you a broke ninja but that's neither here nor there you always want some free ride but they'll say shit like this in fact i caught desi i caught desi banks red-handed <laughs> pandering let me see if I can find this ninja. Where's Club Shay Shay? I'm going to tell you what type of compliment it is. Instead of me mimicking it, I'm going to show you the compliment that I'm talking about. I'm going to show you the situation I'm talking about. Here we go right here. Here we go. Typical some Abba Daba shit. All right, so listen to this conversation. Social media made dating harder. Um, it's hard, man. I think it's, uh, it's a lot of competition now when it comes to relationships. You know, I think women get lost in what they see. You know, um, uh, from a persona of, uh, you know, from women dressing, um, from how they view uh, other people's relationships, mm -hmm. uh, stuff that probably don't last. You know, women get lost. Of, they seeing other couples going on vacation and mad that they man or whatever it is not taking them there. And, you know, women get mad at that. And they be like, oh, I deserve this. I, I, I deserve to go out of town. I deserve All right. So what are you hearing? He bringing that heat, right? He bringing the heat. He putting up, he putting he putting the uh, tin pan on the Jiffy, the Jiffy pop on the stove. And he heating up. He cooking. He cooking with hot fish grease. He like, these women got bad expectations. They da da da. But if you know anything about him, he has a audience that he depends on women being supporters. So watch him start tap dancing and backpedaling here. And going back to the traditional broke ninja talk. All right. And watch out. So he get he cooking. But watch this. He had to realize and wake up and snap out of it and think that his mama's black. They're the, the, the take flights and stuff like that. So people get that, 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 that type of mentality. You know, we don't live in a mentality of women no more. You know, um, how it was when our mamas and stuff was going on, when grandma was going on. These, these women ain't original, original no more. Oh. These are social media women now. Right. Okay. You know, it doesn't change them. Right. You know, and that's the, that's, that's, that's the hard, like, that's, that's the battle, man. You know what I'm saying? These, they just want a club now, you know, um, uh, but it's still good stuff. I, I would say. Here we go. Here we go. He snapped out of it. Did you see it? That MK Ultra program and hit his ass. New, new, new world Watch order. this. Watch this. When it comes to women, it's a lot of more entrepreneurs mm -hmm. when it comes to women. A lot of women doing business out there um, uh, when it comes to certain things. A lot of women are being bosses, you know, on their own. They, uh, I feel like they get money. They're not, you know, too much relying on men when it comes to a lot of stuff. And I like that. That turned me on. I love to see a woman that's, that's about her business, you know what I'm saying, doing her own thing. I can do some shuffling too. Look out, man! What, what you going to do? Look out, boys! It's coming through. Yeah, man! Yeah, man! See, when I hear black men say that, I say it's over for y'all ninjas. It's over. Y'all never gonna get what you want. I don't care how many Kevin Samuels become alive and come on the airwaves and takes over. <laughs> I don't care how many CGAs and Kevin Samuels and the black manosphere. I don't, I don't care, man. Because at the end of the day, y'all goofy ass and just going to always do this. You're going to always tap back pedal and tap dance right when you bring in the heat. You're going to fucking backpedal. And I like an entrepreneur. And it turns me on. It's sexy when who, who, where? This is not sexy. And ninjas that think it's sexy, you mammy, you, you son husbands, you mammy ass ninjas. Your master said, yep, your great grandma voted for JFK and your mama voted for Obama. And now you, I go, you know, I got to vote for Joe Biden ass ninja. And it's, dude, this is why I can't team up with you ninjas. Because y'all all tap dancing, shuffling ass ninjas for your master, which is the gynocentric matriarch, which is the black community, which is in rubble. It's burning. It is been burnt down like a Tulsa bombing. It's gone. Because y'all ninjas are weak. And I did support him the other day. 
um, in his his story. But this is this the weak shit that I hear. First of all, who thinks this? Who re- like what man? Wait a minute. What man actually? Uh, let's put up a poll <laughs> right here. I got time for y'all today, man. I'm just letting y'all know, man. Yeah, I got time, cuz. Like, hear me out. There are some guys. There's some guys that believe this. But, but, I'm going to put a poll up. What man be like, oh, it's sexy, entrepreneur. What, eyelash text? What kind of entrepreneurs are we talking? If women in that community were such entrepreneurs, Why in the hell is the community look the way it looks? Why? It don't even make sense that they're business and entrepreneurs. It don't even make sense that that is actually a standing in the community. It's a myth. It is non-existent. If they are, they typically don't employ more than five people. Not even five. This is not entrepreneur. I mean, it is, but it is not something that's going to sustain. So then these women then look for men to complete the circle. He has to have equal or above. He can't have less than, which is going to be a problem with these women, these Ebony K. Williamses. Entrepreneurs. These aren't large businesses. These are very small businesses of one employee to five. Let me put up a poll. Who thinks sexy, who thinks entrepreneur female, let me see, business owner males are sexy. (laughs) All right. Uh, Let me see this. Not just sexy, sexy and wife material. Let me see here. Sexy, not sexy. Anyway, man, I, I swear, like, that's the type of shit I'm talking about. Like, I'm not going to, yeah, they just nurses, like, they drive a Nissan Altima. They, they're doing the bare minimum, and y'all need to show up. Oh, my Lord. I mean, selling candles, waste traders, and taking trips, and I like a woman that got her own. I love her because she got her own. She don't need mine. She said, leave mine alone. There ain't nothing in the world sexy than the world a girl that won't but don't need me. All right, what the hell are you talking about, ass ninja? <laughs> All right, there we go. Let me see here. And then these ninjas be taking it up the Duke shoot on these women with they strap-ons. <laughs> okay. This is not a sustainable strategy for a community. Now, by the way, for the people who be like, yeah, it's sexy, look at the black community top. Look at the black community. Uh, if this is so sexy, why these women ain't married? They're the most married. They're the least married and most divorced. They're so sexy. How come y'all ain't marrying them then? <laughs> Maybe because y'all broke. And the women don't want to marry you. This is a disgrace. <laughs> there ain't nothing in world sexy. Jesus. Than a girl that won't but don't need me ass ninjas mm. pegging you with her strap on ass ninjas man would y'all buck up ninja what the hell <laughs> yeah. i got time for you ninjas today yeah, I got time, all right ninja y'all done pissed me off today all right anyway somebody got me pissed off all right what are we doing here uh we're going to the last episode main event let's get into it let's put it out here let's put it out Main event, we have several women asking, why are they single? Look at the poll right now. Yeah, failed pimps. I live up under my girl, and she, you know what I mean? The, the, black, the, black, the black male image is in the gutter. You guys are fake pimp. Holy mackerel. <laughs> I forgot about this. I forgot. <laughs> it's, man, I forgot about my effects here. But you got fake pimps perpetrating pimps, immature players. We got men 30 and above talking about being a player. It's an absolute disgrace. What is wrong with you people? (laughs) Men, you're over 30 years old. I'll be out here playing these hoes. Black men, what's going on, brothers? And then y'all run back to y'all mammies and vote JFK again. 
Obama's the new JFK. Bill Clinton, the new JFK. Joe Biden, the new JFK ass ninjas. Ugh. Because your mammy tell you, you, I told you to do Biden. And I like a sexy entrepreneur. Let me see what Desi tap dancing. Let me let me complete this shit. Let me see what this ninja talking about here. You know, because I I know myself do my own thing, so I understand the mentality that they that they have. Right. So that like even with women, I would love to connect with a woman like that that do their own stuff because mm-hmm. they understand the grind. They understand what it takes. Right. They understand you know um, how you got to do it. They understand the long hours. They understand the investment that you got to make. They understand. What in the hell is you talking about? This is unbelievable. I don't know what, like, 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 you know, I've been lived in a community in a long time. Brothers. What are y'all, what world are you talking about? <laughs> like, mm. what women are you talking about? Like, where, where are all these black business women at? Anybody know? I don't know. I don't see it. I see lash techs and nail salon owners and hairdressers and hairdresser owners. I see this. I do see the lawyers, Ebony K. Williams and these people. I, I, listen, and where are all the marriages to these women at? I see all the corporate drones and I see all the HR directors and the people that work in direct and marketing and shit like that. That don't count. Where are y'all? <laughs> mm. she understand the long hours? He, she. I'm actually miffed at what person you're talking about. Like, where are all these people at? And where's all the money going? <laughs> you know, he said on oh, social media. <laughs> where are all these women? He said on oh, the internet. Where, what are you talking about? Atlanta? Yeah, he might be just talking about Atlanta. Because, yes, but I always tell you, you got to take Atlanta and take it out. Whatever you're describing about the black community or the black people in general, take Atlanta out of the equation because they're kind of like, um, they're like the highest score or the lowest score on your test, right? Where the teacher would be like, all right, we take out your lowest score and we round it up. All right, thanks for doing me that favor. You got to take Atlanta out. That is not indicative of the rest of the country. And I get a lot of people that watch my show and be like, what you talking about, coach? Atlanta. And I'm like, take Atlanta out. Atlanta is not the real world at all. Okay, so Atlanta, okay. Yeah, I get it. Atlanta would be a situation that could have that scenario. But take that out. And then what you got less. It's an outlier, complete outlier. Then you might consider Washington, D.C. or Houston. But I'm only going to give you one. I'm going to let you, I'm going to throw Atlanta out. It's a curve buster. Let's see what the rest of the world looks like. Nothing like the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Understand all that stuff. But they and those, you got to find that right person. Yeah. 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 You got to find the right person. Yeah. You, you got to pick your side, too. You know what I'm saying? You got to pick yourself. All right, I'm done with this ninja, man. I'm done with him. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. It's not real world. Not the real world. And the funny thing is, if you take Atlanta out of Georgia, Georgia ain't nothing but rednecks at the end of the day. From, from Florida, Georgia line, all the way up to Athens. Ain't nobody there. <laughs> right? Georgia is Alabama. If you took Atlanta out of Georgia. So... I mean, overnight, but I know this is kind of like a fairy tale as well, but we're all dealing with fairy tales. <laughs> Complete outliers. And look at the statistics. Everybody will tell you, bro. I've been to Georgia, but shout out to Savannah, Georgia, and Augusta. Never go to Augusta or Savannah in July. Just letting you know. All right, that's, that's just my advice. Right here, right here. Atlanta should have their own rules and they should lock it up uh, and they should put a fence around it with barbed wire at this point. Where are we going here? He said, let's throw the best uh, students out of class. Atlanta's the best students. Atlanta's not the best. 
Atlanta's not the best students. I would give, if, if I took a black culture of people, of black excelling people, it would not be Atlanta. I would give it to like Washington, D.C. And I would say, emulate these blacks. <laughs> right? Sorry. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's what I would do. I would take D.C. I would, I would take something like that. I would not throw, Atlanta is, dude, Atlanta is Sodom and Gomorrah. No, Atlanta is not it. No. And trust me, I've been there many, many times. Don't don't come on here and defend Atlanta. And a lot of y'all live in Atlanta, so you're you're siding with Atlanta, and you ain't never been hide nor hair anywhere but Atlanta. You ain't been nowhere else but Atlanta. So stop it. Stop it. Please go to the rest of the country. I would say D.C. is more indicative of what you should shoot for. I mean, if I'm just picking one of a Mecca where there's majority, I would go with D.C. over Atlanta or the Metro DMV. I would go over that before I take Atlanta. <laughs> All right, anyway. Oh, my goodness. Shout out to everybody in Atlanta catching strays. And a boom, 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 boom. All right, anyway. Let me see here. Atlanta. All right, anyway. All right, so shout out to the DMV. Where are we at here? All right, why, why am I still single? This show is already off the rails. Here we go right here. Look at this. This woman says, uh, this is a voiceover. Don't know. My face given. My body T. My money up. I'm that bitch. I don't have a motherfucking answer. I don't know. My face given. My body T. My money up. I'm that bitch. I don't have a motherfucking answer. All right. And so there you go right there. This woman's definitely, I don't know, Raggedy Ann. All right. Uh, Shout out to her. She's saying, why am I still single? And that's her response. And that's why you're still single. My face given. And I'm that bitch. This is what's keeping you single. All right, so that's a voiceover. Please understand that that probably is a reading rainbow guy voicing over that clip. Now, we do have another woman that says, how am I still single? How am I still single? Okay, um, this woman's going to list her qualities, and she's going to be honest and list her pros and cons and list her resume other than her body count. Let's go with it. I'm 31. I don't have any kids. I got a credit score of 803 exact. Recently pulled. I have two paid off cars. I'm about to close on my first house this year in May. I'm not toxic at all. I got a big booty. I'm releasing an app on iOS and Android. I work hard as fuck. I'm not clingy, but I'll always make sure my partner feels appreciated. Okay, so I don't cook, but I can. I can learn. And it's not like I don't know how to cook, but I just don't cook as much as I should. I'm probably not as feminine as the average feminine female, but I I wear heels, I dress up. I just feel like I have a very dominant personality. I'm 5'8 in my head, but 5'4 on paper. I've never actually lived with a partner before. I'm just trying to figure out how am I not married with five kids running around? Now, this might sound bizarre, but to me, it is fairly obvious. I mean, how much more obvious can you get? I mean, you're a train wreck, but they don't see it. Uh, again, it's like when the people have some, the people, I'm going to stop being on black people today because y'all got enough. When people live with a smoke detector and it's just beep, they don't hear it. Beep, they don't hear it. I might have a smoke detector and I might not hear it. Beep. How am I still single? And she can't, she can't see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're then going to try to explain it. Story time. I once met this fierce, fiery redhead, pale skins, pink toes, and all of that stuff. She was a delight. But she had four children. Now, all of these children were older, but she was my age, meaning they all were like 12 and up, right? The oldest were starting to get old and moving in and out of the house, okay? Most of them were teenagers and shit like that. She watches my show. I won't say her name, but she watches the show. She's knew me before, but she knew me before 
I became Coach Greg Adams on YouTube, but she's heard all of this shit before. So it's not a surprise. She's not shocked. She heard me saying this all before I even joined YouTube. But let me say this. She once time asked me. She's a nice lady. She cooked. She was very feminine. One of the things I did, I, I, I liked about her. She had a job. She was feminine. She had kids. But one of the things I didn't like about her is she was very um, uh, sneaky. She would be like uh, texting, uh, not, not texting. She would uh, spy on you. Like she'd spy on your Instagram activity. Back when Instagram will tell you what you liked, all the pictures you liked, she would go to them or who liked your pictures and she would go to them and spy on them. And then she'd ask me about it. Hey, who is this? Who is this? So anyway. And I'd be like, you, you're looking at people's content who likes my content. Yeah, very, 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 uh, very bizarre spying CIA type FBI. I didn't really like that about her. So I kept my distance from her. But she asked me one day. She asked me, she said, what do men want? I have my own job. She had a job. She had a job. It wasn't a successful job. It wasn't a bad job. She owned a house. Um, she was feminine. She cooked. She was nice. She was somewhat sexual. Not the best, not the worst. And she would be like, why am I single? And I told her, I said, I said, well, you have four teenagers. She was previously married. She got divorced. Um, and she was uh, married into, with, to a military guy. And uh, he ended up divorcing, leaving and out of the house. So that's what ha- that, that So she was, not a baby mo- she was not a baby mama. She was uh, divorced, but she had married a military guy. All the kids, same father. And I said, you have four teenagers. Nobody in their right mind. And I told her this straight up because I'm always straight up with women. I'm like, nobody in their right mind is going to take you seriously. And she was like, what? She was shocked. She was shocked. She was like, what? That shouldn't matter. And I was like, Hey, I tried. <laughs> I was like, I tried to tell you. And of course, still single. Now, she'll have hookups and little boyfriends here and there, in and out, and children. But I'm like, ma'am, nobody, nobody moving in with you, bruh. Not only that, she had two teenage girls. Like, no. <laughs> Hell no. Two teenage girls. Like, no. And she could not deal with it. It was wild. Again, going back, this woman can't deal with the realities of you're not marriage material. Let's run it down. I'll let her run it down. They don't see it. (laughs) Yeah, I tried. And again, I'm like, all right, you asked me. I gave you the answer. That ain't it. Okay. (laughs) I don't know what to tell you now. All right, here we go. Here we go. Like, what the fudge am I doing wrong? Most people say, oh, I don't give people a chance. Yes, I do. I have boundaries, though. And I don't let people fuck me over. I'm going to say more than three times because I give chances. I even give you a second chance. But it's so easy for me to just walk the fuck out once you start playing with me. But I still don't understand how I'm still single. Man, I hope she joking. She joking, huh? I'm 31. 31. That's already a... I mean, just about everything is wrong with this. Just about everything. The only thing she got going for her, and I'm going to just say this because I'm honest, is she's light-skinned. She's light-skinned. That's the only thing she got going for her at this point. And it ain't enough for me to overlook. All right, but she's, you know, typically people give light-skinned women a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. That's about it. I don't have any kids. I got a credit score of 803. All right. So these are things. These are all metrics that men tend to uh, look for. But that's good. She's responsible. Great. Exact. Recently pulled. I have two paid off cars. Two paid off cars. Congratulations. I mean, I, I, I don't think women understand that. But the majority of men don't really care about this. Pookie and Glocktavius might care about it. And yes, they're going to ruin your credit. 
So she probably doesn't want them at this point at 31. Let's continue. I'm about to close on my first house this year. That's a problem for a man. Let me just say for <laughs> she's a Lily Lint Licker for a man who is looking for a mate, not a partner. She's going to mess up there. He's looking for a mate. One of the problems women are going to find is that if he has, if he's self-sufficient and he has the life that you believe is matches up with you, the problem is you have your own house. Who's going to live where? This could be a contentious subject, and it could possibly lead to somebody feeling like they're getting the short end of the stick. Like, you got to move into my house, or we got to sell your house, or he has to sell his house. This could be a problem. And if she's sticking to it, no, I worked hard for my house, well, then I'm not moving into your house. So this is just going to be a stalemate. It could potentially be a possibility that the relationship collapse on that point right there. So men are typically not desiring a mate that has this many liabilities. These are not assets, really. These are liabilities. Because now I got to live in a house that you bought that I don't necessarily don't want to live in. Or I got to move you out of there and convince you to. And you're like, I didn't want to move out of my house. I don't want to sell my house or rent it out. We can sell it. We can put it up. We can rent it out. Uh, by the way, Fanny Willis described, I believe... If Annie Willis described this scenario, she might have. Let's continue. M.A., I'm not toxic at all. False. Mm. I got a big booty. Okay, that's, a, that's two things working for you, but that's not a necessity for me. I'm releasing an app on iOS and Android. Again, this is a kind of a masculine sale here. You're not selling any femininity, but congratulations. I'm glad for you. If you were my daughter, I would be proud of you. All right, but for the most part, this is not going to get you a man. A man or or a Lily Lint liquor. I work hard as fuck. Nobody cares about that. See, these are qualities. Mm. Right. Yeah. And then and then somebody said, help pay my mortgage. Yeah. You move into a woman's house. You split the rent. You're paying her mortgage. She gets the benefit of you paying her mortgage down. Going back to this. I work hard as fuck. Nope. Said nope. Not many men care about this unless you're Desi. All right, or you're uh, or you're pushing the narrative that I like me a sexy woman at work and all. Yeah, all right, nobody cares about this, but it is uh it is could be an issue. I'm not clingy, but I'll always make sure my partner feels appreciated. I'm not clingy, but all right, it doesn't sound like you're pretty available either. Let's continue. Uh, but her hairline is pushed back to where my hairline is. Let's continue. Okay, so I don't cook. But I can. I can. All right. Yeah, I can learn. I can learn. I can learn. I don't cook. Um, again, uh, who who used to say, I think TK, TK Kirkland, who's who raised these women? Well, in reality, we raise women like this now. Don't worry about cooking and cleaning. We got microwaves and and and, and delivery food and, and and shit like that. Right. Don't be feminine. No, nah, no, don't worry about that. So the mothers are out here. They're emulating somebody and they're taking the masculine role. Now, I don't cook, but I can learn. It's too late. All right, you're not going to do it with pride uh, or with the full heart. Let's continue. And it's not like I don't know how to cook, but I just don't cook as much as I should. I'm probably not as feminine as the average feminine female, but I, I wear heels. I dress up. I just Nah, this ain't it, bro. I mean, listen, for me, if I work this hard to be where I am, I want what I want. And this ain't it. So you're finding that the majority of men don't want this. I'm not as feminine. So you have an alpha masculine woman and there are alpha masculine women out here, but they also struggle to find mates. They struggle to find mates. You know, this is the stuff that kind of, you know, women before didn't have access to sports and shit like that. Um, and now they do and they have, they're confident and they're accomplished. They're strong. They got hard ass hands and you know, that's the benefits that they are now confident. However, a lot of that masculinity, I mean, a lot of that femininity has been chased out of them by Lily Lintlickers and feminists. So now she's, her remnants of her athletic past is now, she's got to live with it. She's got to live with these broad ass shoulders and these large ass trapezius muscles. She's got to live with these rough ass hands. She's got to live with the fact that she didn't play uh, with her, um, with her uh, easy bake oven and she played basketball and she Lily Lintlicked on the side. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's just kind of what happens. There's there's not always a, it's always going to turn into a positive. Yeah, we got negatives now. Good, you used to hoop, but you your hand's strong as fuck. You got a masculine aura. You're a lot feminine. Feminine is going to be a problem 
when you're trying to choose a mate. Not a partner. Let's continue. I just feel like I have a very dominant personality. Yeah, you need a girlfriend. I'm 5'8 in my head, but 5'4 on paper. All right, so we have a problem here. She's 5'8 on paper in her head, but she's really 5'4. She's probably 5'3. All right, but, you know, this is kind of like one of these short people who think they're bigger, um, but, you know, all bark, no bite. You know, ain't nothing worse than a short, mouthy woman. <laughs> all right, a short, masculine woman. Ladies, if you think short, masculine men are a problem, try short, masculine women. It is very, very toxic. Let's continue here. I've never actually lived with a partner before. I'm just trying to figure out how am I not married? All right. I've never lived with a partner before. Problem there. Anybody using the partner vernacular is pushing a progressive agenda. Mostly a reading rainbow agenda. Partner comes from the reading rainbow community. It has nothing to do with femininity or it has nothing to do with matching mates as a male or a female. Now, some of you Gen Z people don't know this and aren't aware of this, but partner comes from the reading rainbow community and it has all to do um, with progressive mindset and little to do with tradition. And that neck tattoo is not helping you out. Ladies, I know you Gen Z people think, you Gen Z people think that, that people, people's mindsets are changing around tattoos. But doing something stupid like a neck tattoo when you're young is absolutely dumb. And no, it hasn't changed like you thought. Wait till everybody gets a little bit older. Putting a goddamn poem on your abdominal area, putting a thigh tattoo or a leg tattoo. This is some of the dumbest things you can ever do. Then act like, how come nobody's selecting me when you got a damn neck tattoo? Listen, if that's what you want to do, do it. But when you get to start to maturing and you end up divorced or you end up older and you end up having a neck tattoo is dumb. I would not do it until I'm into a maybe into my 30s or 40s, maybe or 50s and you secure and you lock down in your place. But this is a still a turnoff for many men, not all men, but certainly men. When you when she starts saying I'm done with Glocktavius and Pookie and then she wants to go with some high value men, some masters of the universe, as the black man, the sphere says, or they might say uh, Kevin Samuels or his his people used to call them uh, Henry's. I believe a Henry, right? You want to go with these men? They're probably least likely to select a neck tattoo. Least likely. Mm. Glocktavius, yes. But I do see a lot of single women here running around with tattoos all willingly on their body. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be tough for you to be taken seriously. It's going to be tough for you to be taken seriously. That's just a matter of fact. You can't change that about us. You can't change that. You can't just say, well, it's the sign of the times and you just old in the Neanderthal. Well, the value that I have is the fact that I'm older in the Neanderthal. That's what makes me the man I am that you desire, that you probably could benefit from. Because you try Glocktavius, you try Keandre, and now you're here with this fucking neck tattoo. I'm just telling you, stop doing this you, you know and stop trying to browbeat us to accept it stop doing it the guys that want this they already kind of maybe figured out their path they're you know tattoo artists and they own tattoo studios well go with them they're, they'll accept it but you can't just come back over here with this fucking stamp branded right there where everybody can see it that's a complete turnoff I can't bring you to certain places. It's tacky, it's tasteless, and it's an absolute sign of not being stable and making good judgments, good sound judgments. And she probably did it when she was 21 or 18 or 19. It is a dumb choice. I don't care what you think tattoo culture is turning into. This is a dumb choice to make at that age. It is extremely short, shallow-minded. And you're going to fucking be paying for this to try to find a partner. You're going to be paying for this for the rest of your life. Nobody's going to take you seriously. 
Mm. Period. The people who will take you seriously probably aren't the people that you might want at the, at this age. But that's 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 my opinion on that. With five kids running around. Like what the fudge am I doing wrong? Most people say, "Oh, I don't give people a chance." Yes, I do. I have boundaries though, and I don't let people fuck me over. I'm going to say more than three times because I give chances. I even give you a second chance. But it's so easy for me to just walk the fuck out once you start playing with me. Yeah, so she's unstable too. You know, that, that right there, you see the, the voice quiver. Right, I'm going to just walk the F out once you start playing with me. So she's used to men doing this type of behavior and choosing men like this. So you start playing with me, I'm going to walk the fuck out. And she ain't going to walk the F out. She's going to make, she's going to burn your house down. That's what she's going to do. Mm. Why am I still single? But that was my honest assessment. It's going to be up uphill battle for her. She's going to need the high level it's exception the to the rule to be able to prove me wrong. Let me so take it here to the next woman here. Hi. Now, this is going to be bad. You thought she was bad. Check this out right here. Take a look at this right here. Wowzers. Uh, oh, the humanity. This woman says, I know I'm plus size and ugly, but why am I still single? <laughs> oh man yeah she gonna burn your car yeah she definitely was gonna burn your car all right so what do we got here let's hear the lady out let's give her a chance here what advice would you give her to be able to become not single all right here we go again crisco tears yes crisco tears here's the thing they don't get it it's like you're so Lost, like you won't accept your fate. She says, I have a punani, I should have a man. I'm a woman, I should have a man. This is false. This is entitlement. This woman smells like sweat, wet chicken, and uh, neck sweat, and Crisco tears. <laughs> she smelled like, she cries grease, this one. <laughs> What do you not understand? I mean, even you're acknowledging it. I'm no, I'm, what did she say? Plus size. You're not plus size, but that's neither here nor there. I know I'm plus size and ugly, but <laughs> black men, you got a wife here. Yeah, she smelled like a wet chicken and outside. She smelled like a wet dog for sure. All right, unbelievable. Let's hear what she has to say. And watch her squeeze these Crisco tears out of her eyes trying to cry on the internet. And why is your face so red? Oh, my God. Let's continue. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Squeezing them tears out. I don't know what I'm going to do anymore. Oh, my goodness. Oh, the humanity. Everyone keeps telling me I'm beautiful, but I don't see it. <laughs> She said, everyone keeps telling me I'm beautiful, but I don't see it. Um, I don't see it either. <laughs> I don't see what they're talking about. Now, are ninjas going to smash this? The answer is yes. Ninjas are going to go in there and give them the penetration of bottomness. They're going to make her squeal in pig suey. And they're going to roar and skedaddle. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> Everyone says I'm beautiful. Okay, here we go. It's been no miss. 12 months since my divorce, and I'm almost 40. Oh, no. I feel like I'm not going to find anybody else. Oh, the humanity. All the men who have been interested in me just want to use me. They just want me for sex. They just want sex. They don't yeah. want me for me. Y'all, somebody just said what I was thinking. Y'all ninjas are a disgrace. She just said it. She said, let's go back. She said, all the men who want me just want me for sex, not for me. Who is out here hogging? That's number one. Y'all hogging ninjas need to be stopped. 
That's number one, because ninjas is out here hogging. Yes, y'all are. Hey, by the way, if I pulled up her Tinder, I would see a bunch of y'all ninjas in here hogging. Number one. Number two, she said she was a divorcee. She was divorced one year ago. All right, ma'am, obviously you were married and you let yourself go. So you were 39, divorced, now you're 40, and out here, back out here in these streets. In these streets. You got out here and got pounded six ways to Sunday. You caught ninjas out here hogging. And now you thought you was going to jump into a relationship. Ladies, I'm going to tell y'all married women today, and I ain't trying to help y'all out. (laughs) So I said, I can explain. You nasty ninjas out here. But I'm going to tell these married women, I'm going to get me a better man. I'm going to get me a man that treats me right. I'm going to get me a man that rolls out the red carpet. I'm going to get me a man that cooks and cleans and pays half the bills or more. I'm going to get me. And they come out here and they get throttled. Married women are deceived because they miss the entire hookup culture. You miss 304 culture. You miss passport bros. Y'all didn't miss all kind of shit. You miss these women out here selling puss. And you're just completely demoralized and miffed as to how come you can't just find another man. Ah, where's all the men? I'm going to go to the boyfriend store. Here we go. I'm going to drive over there. I'm going to get me a new boyfriend. Get out the car. Where's there all the bit? Wait. What happened? Where did all the men go? Where's all the boyfriends? All right, fuck it. I'm going to go to the husband store. All right, you drive to the husband store. Brrr, drive to the husband store. All right, where's get me a husband? Come here. All right. <laughs> didn't make no effort. Didn't drop no poundage. Didn't get fit. Didn't take a shower. Didn't do your hair. Didn't put on some mascara. You didn't make no effort. Now you're on the, cry, now you're on the internet crying Crisco tears. And you ain't even unbig your back yet. At all. Your face red like you've been. Look at this. What is going on with these hairlines, man? (laughs) They be telling you about my. They be talking about I'm bald. Look at this hairline. Where does this start, brother? Let's continue, man. This is sad. And I keep being told that men don't like feelings. Wait, what the hell? No, that's not true. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Oh no. Hold up for a second. Jesus. <laughs> what is a woman supposed to do? Oh no. Yeah. There y'all go, ninjas. There's your traditional woman right there. Now, (laughs) this is my question, ladies and gentlemen. What makes her think that she deserves a man? That is the problem. That is the problem. What, like, even this other woman, like, My question is, what makes you, what is it about you that makes you think you get your own personal mail? I'll wait. And I've been saying this for years. This isn't new. I've been saying this for decades. What makes you think that you get your own personal mail? All right, that you could just be like, oh, okay, um, I'm ready. Let me get a mail. Like, you get a man, all right, and then he's going to love me and treasure me, and we're going to go on trips and vacations, and we're going to go eat, and we're going to go to the restaurant. We're going to go to the... Where? Who told you this? This is a problem. (laughs) This is a problem. Programming, teacher, school, Disney. You living in la-la land. You don't get your own personal mail. That's something that is not an entitlement. It's not what you men are supposed to just start. No. You just going to run your raggedy ass out here and then be like, yeah, I get all my own personal mail. Where? Where do y'all get this from? This is a myth. (laughs) I don't understand. And then she going to get a divorce and I'm going to go get me a man. Now she out here stuck after a year. Ma'am, buckle up your seatbelt. This is going to be a miserable ride 
for the next 40 years. Yes. 40. I always tell ladies, the first 40 years of feminism sure is fun. Ladies, your first 30 years of life seem like this is the, wow, this is fantastic. Look at this. I done walked out here and people start opening doors for me, buying me gifts, talking to me with no reason. You start getting your little titties. You start developing your little body fat. Men start doing stuff. Your father start paying for all your bills. Your brother start helping you out. Men start taking you on dates. This is fantastic, all right? You start shaking and shimmying, and then you like, this is going to be the best ride of my life. Life on easy mode. Life on recruit difficulty. And then reality hits. Guess what? The last 40 years is going to be pure hell. <laughs> hell. You better go get you a Nigerian. A Nigerian. But listen. The last 40 years of women's life is pure, unadulterated hell. And if these women don't stop telling, not me, I'm out here doing it. (laughs) Who told you that you get your own personal mail? Stop believing this shit. First of all, second of all, we are a polygynous world. That's what we are. This whole monogamy thing is an absolute farce at this point it doesn't exist for the majority of people who have ever lived and it doesn't exist for the current people who live today show me the majority of monogamous people and i'm gonna tell you they fucking lying i'm talking about lifelong monogamy not no five years not no i just started out not no i'm faithful i ain't cheated yet you don't get your own personal male that you could just hold on to and just pick and i'm tired of these people trying to figure out why they single because you're the evil stepmother that's why you looking like the evil step mammy you unhealthy you look like you're gonna die if i penetrate you fast far enough okay you look like you you're gonna have a coronary <laughs> it's like what you look like your kidney's about to fail like You don't get your own personal mail. Last woman here. Another woman here. This is a feminist talk. Feminist talk. Feminism is truly a cancer on the world. But if if, if you notice, for the men here that are not in anger, in spite, feminism freed men. I know I, I was once the guy that said feminism is the most evilest thing that has happened on the world than it is. There's nothing more evil and, and damaging than feminism. All right, feminism is a true long form uh, form of cancer. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. It's disgraceful. It has turned society upside down for the benefit of a few, but that's neither here nor there. But once you figure out that it freed men, you actually can be a free agent. You actually can live. Because you're waiting for you're waiting for women to get penalized and get their heads chopped off as a, it's not going to happen, and you're also waiting for women to run back and say, "Sorry, Father, forgive us for our sins." It's not going to happen. That's not what they do. They just let things get destroyed and let somebody come in and march in, and then they are the now owned by them. As never mind, let me stop. All right, they ain't going to put up a fight or bust a grape at all. They're going to let the new people come in, and that's where it is. So feminism has freed men, and it has now got these women in a pickle. (laughs) Now they try to figure out how to survive in an era of where no society is, no group of women have ever survived doing the crazy shit they're doing. And they're mine. They're a hero, though. I'm a hero, and I die my... And so let let me play this woman here. This young woman is going to talk about how much she's a hero and how much she doesn't want to do as a partner as a mate but she wants herself a man she wants to go to the boyfriend store hey i'm not gonna learn how to cook i'm not gonna learn how to clean i am sorry whoa whoa (laughs) that's tough i just i'm hoping that you know my partner would do that for me (laughs) yeah you're gonna date i'm okay i'm the norms don't have to be there i'll be the breadwinner you're gonna date a girl i'm didn't say i'm gonna date a girl okay well you said two things that just referenced dating a girl no, I'm just going to sound really insensitive right now, but no, I don't but care. Guys, guys, 
guys i'm sure can cook and clean and they'd like love three of to them. huh like three of them <laughs> no and they would love to not work and i'll just bring home the money and they can cook and... i'm wow, kidding you want to stay at home dad that's kind of dope <laughs> you can be like a sugar mama <laughs> Yeah. Damn. No, I'm no. not saying that. I'm just saying. No, I know how to cook. Scratch all that. What? No, you can't cook. <laughs> That's no, bullshit. She can't really cook. I don't like to cook. It's not in the cards for me. I'm not gonna learn how to cook. I'm not gonna learn how to clean. I okay. So this is a defiant woman that is desiring a mate. That guy looks familiar too. I don't know. He he looks like Zack Ryder, the wrestler, but I don't know if that. What are we doing, bro? She can't be real. And I'm going to tell you where she really made her mistake. I'm not going to cook. I'm not going to clean. As you can see, she's looks like a, a stronger woman, right? Uh, she looks like she's been in some sort of athletics. And that has helped women become more confident and pursue things. And it's definitely been a plus. But it made them less feminine, right? Feminine in look, feminine in, in mentality. <laughs> and so... What's his name? Bradley Martin. He looks familiar. I can't really place where he is, but I've, I've seen him before. All right. But um, now we got to, I'm not, I refuse to cook or clean. I refuse. She basically, like, I, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Well, listen, cooking and cleaning is not a requirement. Although we can hire maids for that. I don't consider that like a woman must cook or clean. I've been saying this for a while. Women aren't great at cooking or cleaning for the majority of time unless you're, they have an incentive. So if you're just going to make me dino chicken nuggets and tombstone pizzas and shit like that, well, you can save all that. In fact, cooking is not their absolute strength. Some women take care in cooking. Today's women do not. So I get it. All right. Uh, you don't want to cook or clean. You want to do what? Let's hear it. I'm sorry. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> That's tough. I just, I'm hoping that hoping. You know, my partner would do that for me. I'm hoping my partner will do that for me. Okay, I mean, this is what we got. I'm hoping my, I'm hoping my partner will do this for you. So it's a wing and a prayer. Now, in their fantasy world, I don't know what's going on with um, women. They believe like, oh, a man cooks and cleans. I like that. Now, this might sound like something that you might want to sign up for. But what I'm going to tell you is this. Do not sign up for this, Ninja. You will have a dry punani the rest of your life. She's going to dry up when she looks at your goofy ass in that hat and that damn apron. She's going to cheat on you. She might hang around. She might let you cook. She might let you make her some salmon and some fucking asparagus and some quinoa and, and a glass of wine. It might be on and she might find, hey, I like you cook. Keep cooking. You're great at cooking. I can't do it. But she's going to dry up. So that's number one. Number two, then she said, then she said, partner. I don't know if you guys know. Again, I'm going to say it again. That is progressive. Greening rainbow agenda terminology. You guys haven't been around long enough. I have. I remember when they did not have the right to marry. In fact, if you heard a person say partner in the 1990s, you knew that that was automatically a person that had a same-sex mate. That's what a partner was. That was, only, that was the only people saying it in the 1990s. Going into the 2000s, it was the only people that would say, I have a partner, and you knew what it meant. You didn't have to, you could read between the lines. You didn't have to press. A heterosexual couple, couple will never say partner. But now that we've meshed worlds in our progressive world, now women are saying partners. And in fact, they mean a partner. They don't mean a spouse, a husband. They don't mean none of that shit. A boyfriend, they mean a partner. Meaning that they're telling you we're equal, we're on the same level, we're going to be under the law as partners, you're not going to be above, I'm not going to be below. That's what they're saying. And it means something. Because when then when you say you want a husband, she says, no, I want a partner. <laughs> Jesus. So when she says partner, be really conscious that they mean a partner. 
equal on the same length, not submissive, not dom. Now, they could change the rules inside the partnership. Let's continue. So she's very clear as to what she's asking for. This is not a mistake. Yeah, like a business partner. This is a business. This is not a relationship. This is not where you get to tell me what to do. All right, let's here we go right here. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna date. I'm a, okay. I'm the norms don't have to be there. I'll, there it is. The norms don't have to be there. Again, we're just gonna homogenize, just mish everything up and just make up the rules as we go. And if I don't like it, I get the bounce. Then when she shows up in divorce court, she's going to be like, I wasn't a partner. I was a wife, a spouse, a mother, incapable of making my own money independently. She's going to turn into a woman based on the current marital laws, Matt Walsh. Let's continue. Yeah, this is a competitor. This is not a mate. I'll be the breadwinner. She's going to date a girl. I didn't say I'm going to date a girl. Okay. I didn't say that, but you probably have already. Let's continue. Okay. Well, you said two things that just reference dating a girl. No, I'm just going to sound really insensitive right now, but no, I don't but care. Guys, 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 I'm sure can cook and clean. And they I'm, I'm sure they can, but will they cook and clean for you? The answer is no. I'd three of to, them. Huh? Like three of them. <laughs> no, and they would love to not work and I'll just bring home the money. Where, where in the world do you see black men? Maybe. All right. Let, let, what men are you talking about? This, this is who you're talking about. What man grows up and says, I want to be cooking clean and a house husband. But in their world, they think they're certainly out there. Remember, they can't see it. And they might see one on Instagram. I want one of those. How come I can't have one? And they'll just sit around waiting and waiting. Where is he at? I'm going to manifest him. I'm going to do the Lord's Prayer. And then one shows up for Sierra. And then she's like, certainly I can find me one if she can. I'm going to hit the lottery. Let's continue. And this is who Matt Walsh wants us to marry. They want us to marry these feminists. This is whack. This is who Matt Walsh doesn't know that that's out here trying to date. Feminists. The traditional women are all married up. Let's continue. And they can cook. I'm wow, kidding. you want a stay-at-home dad? That's kind of dope. You're going to be like a sugar mama? <laughs> yeah. Damn. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. Look how fast she backpedaled off a of sugar mama. Look how fast she backpedaled off a of sugar mama. Why? Oh, no, I'm not paying for everything. Hmm? Oh, sugar mom. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm not saying that. He still has to have money. He still has to have something. Let's continue and see if she clears that up. I know Scratch how to cook. all that. No, you can't cook. That's, That's no, bullshit. She can't really cook. I don't like to cook. It's not in the cards for me. I'm not going to. All right. So, yeah. So she backed off. It, it seemingly she's backed off. Of, I'm not going to support no man. So she backed off of that. All right, I'm, no, 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 I didn't say all that. I'm not supporting a man. So wait a minute. You want him to cook and clean. You want him to be a partner. You want him to do all this shit. But you ain't going to support him. You make all the money. She said, I'm going to be the breadwinner. Okay, you want to stay at home husband? You don't want to support him? Well, you still got to have a little bit of something. Oh, man, almighty. Take care out here, gentlemen, man. Let me get to these super chats. Why am I still single? That's another example. Uh, you know, there's got to be that. There's got to be a guy out here like this. And they'll wait and wait and wait. Wow. Man. Be careful out here, gentlemen. It's slim pickings. It really is slim pickings. But I would use her ass. I would definitely use her. All right, but that about it. Her little muscular ass. All right, what are we doing here? We got one, two, and three. We got our brother here. We're going to call you Swerve in the building. Thanks for all the game you give, Coach. I listen every day while I drive. Shout out to the truck drivers out here. Till He says, till this producing thing takes off. Good luck to you. Much love, big dog. Shout out to you. Keep driving. Keep on trucking. And stay safe out there. Stay safe out there. And leave them lot lizards alone. Well, maybe not. Did I get Kalen? I did get Kaylin. Shout out to you. Okay, let me jump over here on over here and then finish with the Super Chats. If you want to donate, get it in now if you want it read right now. Shout out to our brother D. Will says, I used to work at a renter center. We took proof of child support and other government assistance as proof of income from single mother strags. Wow. And you probably res repossessed lots of furniture and television sets, <laughs> right? 
How is that proof of income? We got Miss Joy is in the building, says Gladys Knight had me shook, dropping jewels. Go listen to the song, Mr. Welfare. It definitely is better than I read it. All right, but yes. All right, Gladys Knight was trying to warn y'all women out here to get off the welfare to protect y'all's men's, but y'all threw men's under the bus a long time ago. And thank Lyndon B. Johnson as well as Martin Luther King for selling you up the river. What did Martin Luther King say? I feel like I have my 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 people uh, running into a burning building, in fact. And it's written in my book, The Civil Rights Acts, in which Lyndon B. Johnson is said to have said, I'll have these ninjas voting Democrats for the next 200 years. And he didn't lie. In fact, the welfare system came directly from the Civil Rights Acts that were signed into law by the, but by the agreement of Martin Luther King. He was the spokesperson that said, yes, my people will benefit from this system. As a matter of fact, it has been one of the most dangerous time bombs dropped on the community next to gangster rap in the crack era and eyelashes on strags. I mean, shout out to I Need Money says, do you think if her husband was black, he'd expect, Wait, her expectations would go up. I believe you're talking about, I believe you're talking about uh, the traditional woman. The traditional woman, I, I believe you're talking about her looking at the time that you sent that. Maybe not. Well, uh, let's see, who are you talking about? Uh, who's black? I'm curious. Oh, are, are you talking about her? I'm interested. Interested to know who you're talking about, but you don't have to super chat it. It's just a thought. All right. Uh, let's see here. Feminism. Dude, I'm telling you, we have been really taken over by these agendas, and it's really been de- detrimental to, to, to the groups of people, but it's been beneficial to, to the individual. But, you know, it's freed me. But you got to be completely free to recognize it. Mr. Frugal. Says, well, just found out an ex from 2007 has a daughter that lines up perfectly, perfectly with me. I'm a pimp. She looks just like me. I'm a pimp. The dude she left for is white, so she knew it was mine. He says, "I'm a ninja, f that bitch." I'm a pimp. All right, Mr. Frugal got a whole baby out here, a whole baby. And you just found out 2007, well, your, your kid about to be 17, 18 coming up here in a minute. Mm. Shout out to the dictator says some programs will give money to the child care. The woman will get a sucker to be the child care, but keep most of the money for themselves. Women be hustling the system. They hustle the system. It is wild. Like they'll be like, uh, uh, dude. Uh, I listen. I, I dealt with a woman. Uh, you know, I, I'll just say who it is. I can't say who it is, but you know who it is. They would literally be like, "Well, it's free money, or we we can get it." Um, what, what do they call it? Um, like they can take childcare and get it. Uh, oh man, I'm missing the word. But anyway, I hate when I miss words that that would complete it and make sense. Uh, but anyway, um, basically not written off. Subsidized. Subsidized. That's the word I was thinking of. Subsidized. So they'll go to programs. They'll throw their fucking kids. Like, listen to me, guys. They will throw their kids into a fucking camper. Because the daycare is subsidized. They'll fill out forms. And throw their most important people through the gutter. Put them in the worst predicaments because it's subsidized because the government pays for it. And they'll fucking fill out the form and say they make low income. These people are trash. This is trash behavior. And sometimes you mate and marry and have kids with these people. And I'm like, so what? 
there's a better way out of this that actually is better for your children long term. They'll throw their kids in there for years because it's subsidized and they are getting the check or they get to hustle the system and they get to lie on the form. These people are parasites, low form, belly crawling roaches. And I cannot stand people like this. Now, I've done my dirt out here, but this shit is ridiculous. I cannot say, and then you wonder why you don't get ahead after 18, 20 years of finagling and around the system as a deadbeat, stealing the taxpayers' money, putting your kids in the worst positions you can ever imagine, and then wonder why you didn't come up over on top. Scumbags. I don't understand it. You throw your kids away and sacrifice them at the altar of the nanny goat for a couple of hundred dollars savings at a daycare center or a Head Start. It's a disgrace. Then you had a Beyonce concert at the same time. This shit is wild what people are doing. It's wild. But again, people that watch me do shit like this. This is a disgrace. Run the father right, right off the damn football field and then for subsidized free money. (laughs) Like, how do you ever, then the fathers ran off, then you have to alienate the father, then you have to play keep away in a subsidized piece of shit daycare center. Public school, the worst ones you can imagine because it's cheaper rent there. You people are wild. You people are wild with your thought process of how to get through life. I mean, it's just mind boggling. It's mind boggling. How do you do? How do you arrive at this mindset and think you're going to get ahead at the end? The fuck? You people are crazy. <laughs> like, the hell? How come I ain't get ahead and the system's against me? You are the system. It's these people, man. <laughs> anyway, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, anyway, shoot, keep shooting yourself in the foot and keep alienating your kids from the parent and keep uh, throwing your kids in the worst possible predicaments in life and expecting them to come out with a better result. Shout out to Rue says, Coach, did you hear the story about the ninja snatching a Girl Scout money pouch? I did that. I did hear that. I was going to feature that on Straggle and Sniggle Theater. Strike jacket. Justin, no, I should just let my Juco uh, wait, I should just tell my Juco that since she made Major Doe doing OnlyFans, I should let her take care of me. I can't stand these delusional monkey ninjas, but they won't. That's the problem. Uh, women who make money on OnlyFans think they deserve a wealthy man. All right, and most of the time. Shout out to Nate Daniel says, Coach, after dark, when you shooting from the hip, we know it's not a family show. These Abba Dabba Dabba, Dabba ninjas cracking me up. Thanks, Coach. And you know, you know, that likes me. Oh, man, these people are a disgrace. Shout out to Ricky Reynolds says, I work in the medical field waiting for this fine. I'm Yeah, waiting for this fine ass lab tech female to draw blood on this old guy. I started talking like, hey, hey. He says the old guy pushed him self up looking at her and said, bitches, she ran out. Uh Uh-oh. Interesting. I messed it up. The contractor says they don't grasp why they're single. Eight years ago, I divorced. Ex-baby mama tried to date and couldn't find out why. She settled months ago with the guy with no car. Let him suffer. Shout out to La Ace Boogie says she's the type that will throw all of her accomplish- accomplishments in your face in an argument, a.k.a. toxic. I got my own house. I bought this, and I don't need you, and I don't. Yeah, he, he's talking about that light skin, red bone. Right. So if you're leading with that, you certainly are going to hear about that. You're certainly going to hear about that. And uh, the dictator says, coach. Let me take this off. Look what this light skinned bitch did to my car. And that's a burning car woman for sure. She'll burn your car up. Last point on this one. Guys, don't get finessed by women who own properties that you move into. Remember, rule number one, never move in with the woman. Never move in with the woman. Never move into her domicile. That's rule number one. That's the golden rule. Never move into her house. Number one. Number two, 
If you move into a house that she owns and she's paying a mortgage, you're paying into that mortgage, meaning that you're not on the title, but every dollar you pay is paying down the interest and principal into the ownership, the inevitable ownership of that house. So if she has you paying rent or paying part of the bills or paying part of the, you're paying into a mortgage ownership, but you're not going to come out with any ownership rights at the end. It's foolish. Women will never let you get away with this, especially if she moves in or she marries you and she knows you own the house. She's going to say, put me on the title as a way to protect me in case something happens to you and she can get ownership of that of that property or she divorces you. She can get ownership of that property. But you do that and you start giving her a little bit of money and it goes towards the house. It only helps her pay her bills on time. It helps her with her credit. It helps her with her paying down the principal. But you guys really don't figure that out because you guys are so dumb and think about box all the time. That's a very disadvantageous situation to you. It's dumb. It is dumb. It is dumb economically. It's dumb business. You a dumb ninja if you ever <laughs> do some stupid shit like that. It's absolutely stupid if you do something like that. For real. That that's the it's a dumb move. Like I can't think of anything dumber business wise that you could do as to move into a woman's house that owns the property and you contribute. You contribute to her. That's going to help her close. Uh, uh, that's going to help her pay off the property. You lose. You lose and she'll dump, kick your ass out if she needs to. Anyway, we cooked a lot tonight, but I had time today. But yeah, I, got time, yeah. I think I don't have no more time. <laughs> I think I done ran out of time. But tomorrow is Thursday. I think you, I appreciate y'all for being here. Very short-sighted, but you guys are very, very slow and unsavvy. And that's why I'm here to help y'all. And I and by the way, I've learned these things not only through lessons above my own, but lessons through others. That's why I put y'all up on real game. See, fake game is trying to game women. But y'all don't realize y'all getting game like a mother sucker. And Chucky Booker told y'all a long time ago, why y'all want to play your games on me? And we out of here. Peace. Yeah.